listening to the Pagan Centered Podcast, bringing unique and intelligent perspective to the masses using contemporary technology, allowing for free discussion of one's personal beliefs and enlightenment of those not familiar with a particular religion. We bring to the forefront many issues that are ignored or shunned upon by mainstream religion. We discuss topics on a religious and non-religious level as they relate to our panel representing varied belief systems. Our brute honesty and candid opinion has made us one of the longest-running and most popular pagan podcasts. Feel welcome to call in live or submit listener feedback via our website, PaganCenteredPodcast.com. And welcome to tonight's episode of PCP, the Pagan Centered Podcast. I'm Dave. I'm Amber. I'm Sam. I'm Scurp. Also joining us tonight are... I'm Kara. Dave Karen. I'm Miles. I'm Saturn. Snooze. All right. Tonight we are doing our annual episode for Pagan Values Month. Uh, Pagan Values Blogging and Podcasting Month. So this is our 2011 contribution to this, um, I guess you'd say, pagan-wide effort. So this year we are examining the values pagans express towards one another. And this episode has been so controversial as soon as I posted it, I received a threat of credible violence against me from an author from Wiser Books. So <laughs> what is this topic? And why is it so controversial that it inspired a threat of violence? We'll be right back after these messages. And we're back. Woo. Do you think we can contact Wiser Books to uh, maybe get like a paid advertisement from them? Ah, not after I just burnt that bridge. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, we'll this will be an analysis to see if they condone violence. Um, so, I think there's a great recent discussion on uh, Pantheos.com that kind of highlighted this whole issue. And uh, there was a Mark article called, Who is the Pagan Pope? You are. And I really kind of like that article because it really just highlights this whole issue of people really think that pagans are them. Not that, they, you know, people aren't pagan, but that all pagans are just like them. And anyone not like them must obviously not be a pagan. And that's a bunch of crap. And we all know that on an intellectual level. And last year... um well, last year we just kind of took this topic and threw it aside because, well, we thought this was something the pagan community had put behind us many, many years ago. And what do you know? There's still fair game in the pagan community. So, uh, tonight's episode is Ending Fair Game in Paganism. That is the topic of the night. That is the ever-so-controversial topic. So let's start with what is fair game? So, uh, the image I used tonight for our... Uh, Facebook event came from anonymous protests of uh, Scientology that took place uh, about three years ago as of when this podcast would be published sometime in late May, early June. So what is fair game? Well, taking it from, uh, you know, Xenu.net is a great uh, expose on Scientology, but they're not the only source for this definition. Well... It's not so much a definition as it is a quote. So quoting L. Ron Hubbard, so we might as well give uh, credit where credit is due, as we usually do around here. Fair game. And it goes on to say, may be deprived of property or injured by any means, by any Scientologist, without any discipline of the Scientologist, may be tricked, sued, or lied to, or destroyed. That is pretty much the definition of fair game. When someone becomes fair game, that is what is considered to be acceptable things to do to them. And much to my chagrin, I have discovered that uh, fair <laughs> game is a very prevalent, uh, prevalent practice in paganism. Where certain people will be declared fair game, and they will be lied to, dis, uh, you know, destroyed, injured, sued, lied to, you know, because they're just don't like them. Not that they don't like them on a personal level, or they don't like them because they're a prick. They don't like them because they're pagan in a certain way. And 
Well, Carrie, you got some firsthand experience here, so I'm going to let you you uh, share those experiences <laughs> with us. Uh, you know, I I do have some experience in it. Uh, for about a year, I wrote for a a blog, and it was a blog project of PNC, and it was uh, pagans and po- pagan and politics. And what they were looking for is they were looking for a place for pagans of, of different political backgrounds, different, you know, philosophies to have their voice heard and to try to have it be, you know, a place for civil discussion. And so I, I joined as one of the conservative uh, pagan bloggers. And I had been asked to do it because in the wonderful comments section of the Wild Hunt, which sometimes gets a little crazy, I was one of the few that would pipe up every once in a while and say, you know, wait a minute, people, let's look at it this way. Or, you know, I'm a conservative and I'm nothing like that. I, I don't I don't go with what you're saying. Um, and the response to when I was blogging, um, was kind of surprising. I mean, I expected people to be pissy about it and to passionately debate back. Um, but what I didn't expect was to get emails. Um, I'm going to blow your PG rating. <laughs> um, emails calling me a cunt, um, wishing that I would get raped and then killed uh, in, a, in a news story where someone had, where uh, Congresswoman Giffords was shot, uh, people sending me emails wishing that that was me and that that was what I deserved. And then um, kind of the final thing that really threw me was someone sent me a Google Google map uh, view of my home and a threatening email. And at that point, I started turning things over to the police. Um, but... Yeah, it's it's been it was an interesting year of, of doing that on that blog, and it was I knew there was a lot of pushback towards a conservative political view within paganism, but um, I, I was kind of horrified by how nasty it got real quick. Yeah, I, I, you know when I heard about that uh, about a few months ago for the first time. People are really freaking uptight about the stupidest crap. Yeah. I think, yeah, okay, political discussions tend to be rather emotional. But come on, to to threaten someone's life over an opinion? That's freaking stupid. Well, it was. um, You know, and to... to To be... The interesting thing was to be lectured how... I was the person who promoted violence when I never, ever once promoted violence or said this was a good thing to do. And to be, to have that consistently leveled at me while I'm receiving these kinds of emails and comments that had to be deleted. And, you know, the comment section had to be policed very regularly and that type of thing was kind of amazing at the disconnect, but it was just people's whole thought was you can't exist you know it was either i was a fifth columnist you know i got that thrown at me a lot i was a secret christian trying to infiltrate and ruin paganism um you know there were all these weird strange rumors about me and you know even people who were pretty polite would say things like are you sure you're pagan or they would say, you know, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to understand you because you seem nice. Um, yeah, but the, but I got a lot of pushback on you. You are not us. You have to get out. You have to shut up. You, um, you're evil. You're bad. You're whatever. And then people would, you know, spread around some pretty nasty private stuff about me as well that. I, I have no clue where they came up with this, but they have very rich imaginations. (laughs) That's all I can think of. Well, I I got a kick out of it because I've been, uh, I've been friending a lot of people in the pig community recently and like stupid conservatives. And then they're surprised to see me respond. It's like, well, you know, blah, 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 blah. blah." And I respond intelligently and they're like, oh, damn it. I just wanted to be on my soapbox. There is that. And sometimes people are surprised when you do speak up because I've been asked to leave um, workshops 
um, <laughs> because they've said something, um, you know, where they, they assume the audience all are liberal and they say something and I tell them, you know, I come from that political viewpoint and what you said made me uncomfortable, made me feel unwelcome. And that's not what I think. And then I've been asked to leave workshops because then I gave off a bad vibe and they knew I was a bad person. They were trying to figure out what was wrong with me and now they could put their finger on it. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's yeah, kind of fun. A, but I got I mean, I, I got a question here now. I'm a little bit old school in my thinking of democracy sometimes, but <clears throat> does anybody here want somebody in a position of influence if their way of dealing with a problem is issuing the stalker, well, terroristic activity that uh, Kara received, does anybody think that is somebody who should be remotely in a position of influence? I think that's someone that's in a position of needing a psyche valve. Yes. So, uh, the, the bottom line is if, you, if you're threatening people, that's against the law. It is. Mm -hmm. And if two, two people have received friendly visits from police out of emails that were sent to me, giving them the warning that this is a terroristic threat. If you do something like this again, you know, <laughs> you'll see the inside of a jail. If you can't, you know, maturely deal with a difference of opinion, you should have no control over anyone whatsoever because I know children who can approach a problem and be civilized better than I mean, that. Anger management's a really useful skill. There's nothing wrong with walking away if you need to and I'm of the philosophy that if two people disagree on something, you now have the chance to get some work done. See, but I don't think a lot of these people were angry so much as affronted and wanted me to shut up. That was that was the big thing. They just wanted me to shut up and it's go a away. Public forum. Even if it's by invite, it's still a public forum. You got community there talking, okay? If everybody there is agreeing, it's not worth my time to participate. That's my view. You also have trolls, too, anytime you're going to have a public oh, I, I, forum. Oh, I know that, but I mean... That's what I, I'm... I'm sorry, go ahead. I've learned, and this is just from my own experience, I've learned more from people I disagree with than I've learned from any ten people I do agree with. Yeah, but you're not an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. It's, there, there's people that don't know how to argue a disagreement point and there's people that don't know how to communicate that they disagree without it turning into a third grade pissing match but some of the people that i've seen cropping up exhibiting some of this behavior they're not they're not people that are passionate about a cause they're just they're stupid trolls that want to start crap and the wonderful anonymity of the internet lends itself to cowardice. Now, I'm not saying that some of those people weren't legitimate nutbags that somebody really needs to keep an eye on and possibly a short leash, but I think that does add to it. And it's, like I said, it's, it's, it's some of these people, they're, they're, not, they're not arguing anything that they actually have thought about or hold in high conscience or anything. They just want to start crap and watch the, they just want to watch the storm stir. Actually, let's investigate this a little bit, okay? So, Kara, um, I'm, I'm classically <laughs> unprepared here, so I'm going <laughs> to okay. get prepared here real quick and publicly interrogate you. Okay. Which could make for entertaining <laughs> audio, but okay, now, for this forum you were on, yes. what, were the, what were the requirements to sign up for it? I mean... To, um, as a commenter or as someone who was part of the blog project? Uh, both. Okay. They had writers, and what they tried to do is get an equal number of writers from left, roughly left, middle, right. And that's what they were looking <laughs> for. So they wanted to have kind of a mix of that. And then you were to write and try to write once a week. Now, all the writers didn't do that. We had a lot of writers that dropped off 
we would try to get new writers. Um, but it's, you know, keeping up with something once a week is, is kind of difficult for people. Um, so that was something that, you know, was by invite by uh, Jason of, of the Wild Hunt. So he would recruit writers for that. And he was looking for people who could write from a viewpoint and argue a point without being a complete asshat. So that's what he was looking for. Now, to comment, anyone can comment. Now, did we have to block some people? Yes, we did. Because they were absolute trolls. Did we have to edit comments, do all that kind of stuff? Yes. Yep, we did. So was this just politics or pagan in politics? You know, it was supposed to be pagan in politics. You're supposed to look at political political issues, but how your view of them was influenced by your religion. That didn't always happen, um, but that was the goal of it. Sometimes some of the posts were purely, this is a political position, da-da-da-da-da, this is why I think. Um, but they didn't bring religion into it. And there's a couple times where I did that as well, but... You know, we really tried to focus on giving it that view. This is our our perspective as pagans on world events and politics. Okay, and for the people that were uh, emailing the threats to you and such, um, were they using throwaway aliases or were they regular posters under that name? I mean, I'm just... You know, the people that sent me... You know, I mean, there's people that would send me emails that were just like, you suck. And a lot of those were, were posters that I, you know, I see them on there. I recognize it, that kind of stuff. But the people that actually sent me threatening emails, they were doing it from, like, throwaway accounts. So they, they thought they were being a little more anonymous about it. I mean, I just, I know people are going to be listening to this and even... As little as I keep up with events, I still know a nice chunk of the story, so I'm just trying to flesh this out real quick. Okay, so. Now, from best of your knowledge, were these people pagan? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so. they, were not, they were not Christians who were coming on and going, you know, targeting pagans. Um, the viewpoint was written from a pagan viewpoint and the two people that were um, then spoke to and they lived in other states but they were approached by law enforcement they were pagans Alrighty. okay sorry sorry about taking that time up I just not a problem I mean I was figuring you know I got questions and all that and on the off chance this is somebody's first episode I just wanted to give them a little bit of a ground on, which I actually... <laughs> Oh, and, so. and as long as we're, we're going down that road, uh, out of curiosity, how many uh, Christians online have torn into you like that? Or had, have you had your life threatened, you know, in, in a similar fashion, out of curiosity? Online, never. Have I, had, um, have I had, in the town I used to live in, Austin, which is a smaller town, did, did a, a small group of Christians kind of take offense to me and leave me nasty messages on my car? Yeah, but it was nothing like this. Online, no. I've never I've never received anything from a Christian ripping into me. The other interesting thing is I'm pretty involved in local politics and, and that type of thing. Um, and they know I'm pagan. Like in the Tea Party, they know I'm pagan. In the, the GOP, they know I'm pagan. The, all the local politics. They have no... Like, they do not give a crap whatsoever. I have never taking crap from them whatsoever. The only thing they want to know is, are you for smaller government? Yes. You're in. Let's shake hands. I, that's really all they want. Um, Kara, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Now we talk, yeah, sorry, I, I missed line up. Um, we talk about, you know, Lady Liberty League and how they, they work for uh, civil rights of pagans and such and such. And mm -hmm. it's basically the only real, uh, pagan created, pagan run, you know, pagan, pagan, pagan um, law association, I guess you could say, that's out there. Mm -hmm. uh, what take have they had on what's happened with you? Or do they even know of it? Or have you made them, not made them, but have, have you made them aware of it? Um, no, I haven't, because it's really not a civil rights issue, which is something that they would assist with it. To me, it was a criminal issue. 
you know, once, once you're not just sending you suck emails, but I hope you, you know, or, or, and not even I hope you die, but, you know, directly threatening um, that you are going to take action against someone, that's, that's a law enforcement issue. So, and that's right where people need to take that. I fully agree with you. I, I was just curious because it is pretty much, I know they, they, they focus on civil rights, but it's pretty much the only one we really have out there with any kind of legal capacity so that I know of. So I was just curious. Okay. Yeah. You know, and, and really, do I think people meant to hurt me? I don't. I honestly don't think that. I think they wanted to frighten me. And they wanted to, you know, they wanted to disturb my sense of self, my, my personal life. They wanted me to be thinking about it at night, worrying about it. Um, and they just wanted me to go away. But it's a really sad commentary on paganism that when we have our own community, you know, the folks who we're all supposed to be under this big happy umbrella and they don't even have the respect to, you know, d to, to debate honestly to, you know, that w where they're trying to get in your head and trying to, you know, uh, trying to threaten your life and livelihood and, you know, whatever. This is just ridiculous. See, but that's where fair game comes in and, and how people phrase fair game in the pagan community is I'm intolerant of intolerance, which means I think you're doing something bad that I disagree with. Therefore, all rules are off and I can be as, as horrible to you as possible and it's sanctioned. And that's how people in the pagan community phrase fair game. That's our version of fair game. Totally accurate. That sounds like a Christian kind of mindset where if, if I'm working for the good guys, then all you must be bad guys. And therefore, everything I do in the name of good must be awesome. And therefore, I shouldn't be held accountable. That's just, that's just craziness to the highest order. I don't think that's you can relate it to anything Christian. I think that's specifically pagan and, and neo-pagan. Oh, um, Chris, Christians do it too. I've got first-hand experience. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm sure, but people in general do that. But the way that Kara explained it, I, I see it as something that almost is diagnosable to neo-paganism. Um, I, I, don't e I can't even phrase it better than how she phrased it because it it doesn't have it's not a general statement on well douchebags are going to be douchebags you know it's it's fanaticism is yeah. what it is it's yeah it it's is. you know uh, pulling up the you know the, the the sword and shield of a crusader and going forth and you know slaughtering your enemies despite whether they're small children or you know whatever stands in your way or the fact that, you know, it, you have any sort of reasonable basis for doing so. You know, and I also do want to be clear ab about something. I, I'm definitely not portraying myself as this, this um, perfect model of civility at all times, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, can I, can I be a jerk? Yeah, I can be a jerk at times. I mean, usually then I get horrendously embarrassed and... and apologize but you know yeah everyone has off days and there are times when you phrase things incorrectly and that kind of thing um and there's times when when people get very passionate and and they you know <laughs> use hyperbole and all kinds of things like that and and that's fine um i don't have a problem with that what i have a problem with is is when people get so forceful and push back against, against, usually it's a minority group within your area because you are not us. We want you out of here. You, I don't identify with you. Um, I don't want other people to think that you are like me, so you have to get out. You have to leave. And that's something entirely different. I think one thing that happens a lot, um, talking about minorities, I mean, would, you know, being pagan puts you in a minority, and I've, I've had this happen in 
other groups as well as that, because you're a minority, you feel like you're under the microscope so, so much. And you feel that everything you do is absolutely significant. And one little misstep is going to make any kind of um, momentum that you got just completely go away. Yeah, I totally agree. I think I think the pro- I think this is also where Star Wars going our article that we are so incredibly obsessed with portraying the ideal image of a pagan. Yeah, kind of lose ourselves a little bit. I mean, there. Uh, go ahead. Oh, and I I just I've had it where you know I've I've been in the GLBT community, but they find out I'm pagan and all of a sudden I'm ostracized or I'm in the pagan community, but they find out I follow this certain kind of paganism and well, that's really not something we want to talk about a lot, so we don't want you around. Or, you know, I find myself, you know, I'm, I'm, I identify as a feminist, but my type of feminism is not okay with their type of feminism. So there's like this hypersensitivity within these little niche groups. And so any infringement on it just gets hit with just this exponentially large amount of flack. And it makes it really hard to try to stay, you know, with the community. And and a lot of times it makes it that you just don't want to bother. But that's letting idiots win. Yeah, but that's, I think that's what we're doing right now. I mean, that's what's so frustrating to me about this topic is that there's so much idiocy going on. So on the one hand, we got this whole I- ideal image of a pagan where, you know, and, and working with pagan, you know, there's been a report that, you know, a local PVD said, you know, try not to use words like spells. And I haven't been involved with PVD and right, pagan outreach. Yeah, I've, I've seen stuff like that. I think we need to call a spade a spade, a duck a duck, and move on with our lives as far as words go. And... You know, yeah, there's, there's stereotypes out there. And yes, yeah, some of them are justified. And I think it's time for us to do something about those stereotypes rather than say, you need to tolerate me for what I am, who I am, the way I am. It's like, no, nah, sorry. Uh, we all need to live up to societal standards based on whatever society you live in. Deal with it. Um, and but, just- but even so, I mean, uh, the, the, the fact that people would, you know, go into physical threats, that's just so well, I mean, yeah. it, it, it's, it's craziness beyond the beyond. I mean, I deal with a, you know, I, I'm, I, I hope to be through with pagan space. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, as far as I'm concerned, it's, you know, a, a hive of, you know, villainy and scum. <laughs> That's why you need to check out thepaganveil.com because it's full of awesome. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Yay, Spawn. But, you know, but, but even the worst of the worst on there, I haven't seen, you know, threatened, you know, lives of people. That's just, you know, I, I'm, you know, just blown away that people would be that you know, that horrible. But I think it's a bit of a measure of a person. <clears throat> Pardon. It's a measure of a person to see how you treat someone you disagree with. To see how you treat someone you disrespect. I mean, you can disrespect somebody and not be a douchebag to them. Actually, do we have to bleep that word? No, <laughs> I think, um, man, we just talked about this. I think it was, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but George Takai can say it. Why can't we? Okay, here, if George Takai can say it on 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 public television. Then we can do it. Yay! Woo! George but Takai. I mean, it's. I think even though this kind of hypersensitivity is not particular to paganism, what makes it hard for pagans is that a lot of the different traditions practice. Uh, you know, being open and connected to to the world around you, and I think it makes a lot of pagans have too thin of skin, yeah. and it just opens them up far more to disagreements and conflict than what you normally would find, and that's just ridiculous. You know, you have to first of all be enough of a person to be self assured in your own ideals that someone else's ideas aren't going to threaten you. And that takes some effort, which is why it doesn't happen a lot. And also, you just need to let other people be other people and not try to include everyone into this giant cosmic family where we all fart rainbows and glitter. 
<laughs> oh, you are I, so getting beer and cookies. You are you, big, big, big pack of beer and put cookies is coming. I wonder here. if that's been roll thirty four yet. Beer and cookies? No, fart and rainbows and glitter. <laughs> uh, actually, yes. Let's move on, please. <laughs> no, I, I, she's dead on with that though, because it. I think one of the things that kind of causes that problem indirectly or contributes to it is the idea that solidarity means that we all have to be best friends forever and everyone has to like each other and everyone has to get you know get in a big hug circle and sing kumbaya and we don't we don't have to agree with each other we don't have to like each other there there are people that i'm going to look at and go okay you're on crack and I'm going to go keep my business over here, and I want you to keep your business over here. But you don't, you don't have to get nasty about it. I, we had a, a meetup that went on for a year, and we had two of us weren't speaking to each other, hated each other's guts, didn't you know, didn't want to be on the same planet with each other. But nobody at the meetup knew it because we didn't, and we just did not engage, and we stayed out of each other's space, not each other's way. Uh, now I have had people tell me that that was a flaw and that was a fault and we should have made up and become friends and bonded and probably done each other's nails or something but we don't you don't have to force yourself to be blood brothers or blood sisters with people that you absolutely cannot be on the same page well, with let's, let's but be you can real. handle it maturely let's be real okay now and it's just my thoughts. If two people are disagreeing, fine. If they can agree to disagree, work out some resemblance and rules of truth, I'm happy with that. <clears throat> but the moment where you start obligating people to say, well, we all just got to get along, you start getting insincere behavior. Exactly. You know, you remember uh, what we were talking about earlier about those people who uh, think that because I'm this and, that's, and this is what this is supposed to be, that whatever I do is justified? Mm -hmm. That's a stepping stone in that direction. Yeah, it is. And what's the point of calling people friend and calling people family and, and, and having connections if you're going to use that term for every person that you meet? <laughs> I mean, really, what does that say about you as a person? Yeah, it just cheapens the whole thing. That you have like no standards? <laughs> yeah, like those people with 3,000 friends on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> I had a really interesting conversation with a couple of people while we were over in the UK and it came down to the thing that Americans and, I, and this is not a crash on America unless I just really feel like it should be and then contact me in private Americans have lost the concept that one has friends and then one has acquaintances and it's, and I think that's actually correct. We've, we've gotten to the idea that everyone has to be friends and you have to be on that level with each other or something is wrong with you or you're not a team player or you're not nice or you're not, you're not real friendly, are you? Or some kind of garbage like that. When really it's a lot easier on everyone if there is that level of just acquaintances, because there's not as much baggage and there's not as much weight attached to your interaction. And then if you turn out to be friends later, booyah, way go. But you're not, it's, it's like someone that you decide you're in love with and you're going to marry after the first time you go out for a burr. It's attaching some, a whole bunch of weight and baggage to something that, actually probably negates the possibility that you might ever really have something going on. Yep. Well, I, I got a couple of points here I want to make. First, um, you know, yeah, we don't all have to get along. In fact, it's not a bad idea to help out people you absolutely hate once in a while. Um, you know, like I, like I was talking about earlier, political discussion on Facebook can get rather heated, but I think people are more surprised at when I go, hey, I completely think your viewpoint is stupid. But here's some ideas on how you can perpetuate your political mindset. You know, and, and you know, I'm just tired. I am more frustrated by people wasting their time than what they're thinking about and what their opinion is. I, I want people to be good people and, and reach their potential. If that means they feel really strongly about wolves in whatever Western state, 
then go out there and make it happen. And I'll tell you how, some ideas of what I know on how to make that happen. I may completely disagree with that position, but go for it. See what happens. Oh, I yeah, I completely agree with that. I mean, friends of mine that are very liberal and they're, you know, talking about something they're going to do or a protest they're going to do or that kind of stuff. And I tell them, I hope you have a great time at that. It's great to see people involved, you know, in in their government. I, I love to see that. Go for it. You know, make your voice heard. Um, and about half the time, other people will respond back saying, well, that was really snarky <laughs> when I was being absolutely sincere. It is a good thing. I do like to see it. I don't have to agree with what you're doing. I'm just happy when people pay attention and are involved. I think that people tend to judge you, Tara, based on these labels that they have determined their own um, definitions to. I was just thinking about um, <clears throat> um, you mentioned that the GOP and the Tea Party don't judge you for being pagan, but other pagans judge you for being a member of the Tea Party and the GOP. Um, I'm seeing two different sides or two different sets of rules that these people are going by. <clears throat> um, the Um, the I'll try again. The pagans who judge you negatively um, for being a member of, of the GOP and the Tea Party are not there judging you as Kara. They're judging you as a as a member of this group that seems to want to um, to stamp out everything that they stand for, like liberalism and you know of religion and things like that, and um um several Republicans and Tea Partyers I've talked to who learn that I'm pagan. And yet, and yet, realize that I have a brain. And tend to think that, that if I just hang around with them long enough, I'll eventually see the power of my ways, <laughs> and that I will come around to their way of seeing things. And I think that the um, yeah. It seems to me that judging from Republicans and Tea Partiers I've met, they seem to think that if you are a pagan in their ranks, they'll be able to work you over until you see things their way, or else conversely, they'll say, hey, we have one of the infidels in our ranks, that's one more for the good guys. That's just people being stupid with politics. Well, yeah. Yes, it is. But, yeah, but there's you know, some, there is a whole lot of people being stupid with politics. And right. I, think it, I think it differs, I do think it differs from region to region as to what kind of thing you experience. I also think it differs maybe from region to region what's considered an acceptable way to respond to that kind of thing. I mean, around here, the he-needed-killing defense is still valid to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, um, yeah, and um, the fr um, here, a phrase I saw on Tumper's papers for quite a while was, think globally, act locally. Mm -hmm. um, and... Some people seem to interpret that as think in the big picture, but make sh um, but but make sure that you can hammer those ideals into the guy that you're talking to. 
Well, I think yeah. I, the problem is a lot of people view politics as as our team is winning, and I think um, I don't know, did a whole episode about this. It's um, blood sport. It's, it's mm -hmm. yeah, it's gotten that way. Yeah, I mean, it it has been in the past too. And I mean, you can read all through history that a couple of thousand years back with people complaining about it, but it's it doesn't have to be a blood sport. And I think the difference is in whether or not people largely complain about it as a blood sport or people go, well, it's just the way it is, or they actually even mm -hmm. encourage it because they think it's some type of improvement or point of evolution instead of devolution. Is devolution one word? Yeah. It is now. It is now. It is now. Okay. Mark Mothersbaugh coined it in 1978. Rock and roll. <laughs> and you wore a red flower pot for a hat. Excellent. Okay, so let me get us out of this mud patch that is a discussion about politics. <laughs> and let's spin on wheels. And start moving <laughs> no, sorry, um, I didn't know. I can segue. <laughs> hey, go ahead, go ahead and segue. The, I mean, the the one thing, I mean, the two things you're not supposed to tell to talk to pe folks you want to be friends with are supposed to be politics and religion, because these things are so uh, important and people identify so strongly with. So that's where the crazies really come out is when you start talking about stuff like that. And unfortunately, um, you know, apparently some some folks are so bad that they don't play with others, or at least with them well. See, um, <clears throat> and maybe my brain's just put together wrong, which we'll get into that later. But, uh... <laughs> wow, everybody, maybe. Muted, everybody muted their microphone real quick for that. <laughs> But uh, I like having people disagreeing with me. No, you don't. Yes, I do, actually. Because <laughs> if everybody's agreeing with me, then it obviously means I figured out everything there is to figure out. And then we got problems. Now, <coughs> I'm, I'm thinking a lot of this just comes down to just basic conflict resolution. I think so, too. I mean, I'm just going to say this right here, okay? One, I respect everybody here. Two, everybody here has got at least one point I have a heartfelt disagreement about. Three, what's the big effing deal? I, so I haven't I haven't walked Dave's path. I haven't walked Sam's path. I haven't done a mile and done a mile of miles of shoes. Actually, that's kind of a nice pun there, in a lame sort of way. <laughs> okay, I couldn't do Kara stick. Ashley's awesome still. Uh, Mr. Karen there. Um, well, actually, I like your podcast by the way, but <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I, it's the, I mean, my religion's not for everybody. Actually, I, I, no, I'm pretty upfront about that. Oh, actually, there's a, lot, there's a lot of principles in it I like. But, uh, Snooze, Lamika, Saturn, Amber, I mean, everybody here, you've all points that I disagree with. And all of you have different experience. And I've learned one thing. If you, somebody has a point that I disagree with, and I actually take the time to listen, I normally walk away a little bit smarter. Yeah, that's I might, of, oh, I might not understand your point completely, but a lot of times it gives me a new light to look at my own perspective. Okay, I think it's safe for me to talk finally. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's kind of the point I, I try to get across. Is like people just they forget that the person on the other side is still a person, whether it's on the other side of a video or chat room, whatever. Um, they have their reasoning for coming to their conclusion that you disagree with. You know, again, part of conflict resolution, as you're trying to get at before, is still try to understand how that person came to their position. Put yourself in their shoes, you know, like you said. See, for some people, their, conflict, their idea of conflict resolution is to kick people off the island. Their idea like of conflict resolution is kicked out, kill everybody yeah. on the other right. side of the conflict. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, see, no conflict. Everything's great. Right. Peace by unity. Yeah. Can we all let it sort it out? <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. Right. Now, I was just going to say, and certainly that was the traditional way to win debates. 
exactly. was to wipe out your, your opposition. But here in the modern world, we kind of assume, you know, and rule of law and, you know, respect being that we're okay with the folks who we don't agree with living <laughs> little things. You know, I, I want to bring something up when we're talking about the conversation of ending fair game and paganism. Yes, there are there are people who are in the minority or the nonconformist within paganism. They're on a fringe for whatever reason. They're on a fringe in paganism. Then there are those people who feel that they are the norm or the majority, and they're trying to push those people out. But those two groups are actually very small. The largest group in this whole drama is everyone that stands by and sees it and is fine with it happening. That's, that's where it's messed up. There's always going to be jerks. There's always going to be people who are being marginalized or, or pushed to the fringes. But then there's this whole group of people that just watch and either don't say anything or kind of think it's okay or, you know, and, and it's the same thing with bullying because this is a type of bullying. You know, fair game, that's bullying. It's, yep. yeah. it's institutionalized well, it bullying, but it's bullying. And the most powerful person in a bullying drama are the bystanders. Are they going to continue to be bystanders or are they going to step in and say, this is not our ethos, we're not okay with this? Right. Silence equals consent. Yep. Oh, did you just say that? Yes, I did. Good I said boy. that before. Good boy. Silence Good boy. If you don't speak up about something that you don't agree with, you know, like, they, what's that long quote about, they came for the trade unionists and so on, so on, so Martin on, Nemo. and then they came for me and there was no one left to speak for me, right? Yeah, that Martin one. Niemöller's quote, quote. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm absolutely, like, jumping up and down because I've been trying to good, be a good girl and not use that phrase more than, like, once a day in the past <laughs> couple of months. Because I I turn I run it into the ground, but God, it's so it's so accurate. It the the thing that I find disconcerting with that are people that either see a conflict that needs to be taken down a notch because it's gotten out of hand, or they see a conflict that needs to happen to keep something from getting more out of hand than it is. Because I mean, some conflict does need to happen, and they label conflict bad no matter what it is and even if it is something that has a constructive purpose to it as i just put a quote up my one of my other favorite quotes by dorothy parker is conflict is true peace is not the absence of conflict but having creative or constructive means for dealing with conflict and that's i'm probably getting a word or two wrong there but to me that's true but we've begun treating any conflict no matter what it is as bad or flawed or a fault somehow and i think that goes back to that bestest friends forever thing yeah but uh, the first thing you learn in conflict resolution is that conflict can be a very good thing oh definitely well you think some of these people actually bothered to learn anything <laughs> well, well, i just took the class because it was easy credit Let's conflict, show here's conflict resolution on a pra and I've taken the course too many times. So here's conflict resolution on a practical. Let's say uh, Miles and I disagree on something. I just want to pick on Miles tonight. Sure. But uh, <coughs> you okay. Suck. Awesome. <laughs> there we go. Now, <laughs> most likely, if we disagree, it's pretty good odds. It's just miscommunication. Okay. He probably knows a couple things I don't, or I know a couple things he don't, and we just we're not quite on the same page. Pretty good odds. A lot of times, you can say, okay, this is what I'm seeing. And Miles can say, this is what I'm seeing. A lot of times, you can work something out. Not all the time, but normally. A lot of times, it's personality. I know okay. everybody just got quiet there. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, my God, it might be my fault. <laughs> oh, I'll be the first to tell you I'm a poo-poo head <laughs> I mean I really I can be a poo-poo head 
But sometimes when you're disagreeing with somebody, it's just it's not the topic you're disagreeing with. You just don't like the person. Nothing wrong with that. Actually, I work very well with people I despise. Usually it does work out better that way. You tend to get more <laughs> stuff done in a work environment that way. Yeah. You can maintain detachment that way if you do it right. Yeah. Although overtime don't really work too well in those situations, but <laughs> we're not going to go there. And I'm lost track a little bit. It's been a while since I've actually had things really digress that far. Normally, <laughs> what was it? Communication, personality, what was the rest of it? Oh, yeah. Different needs. There we go. Which a lot of times, if I have certain needs, and we'll say Kara has certain needs, and this and that's why we're disagreeing, a lot of times we can sit down and hammer something out. See, I think you're talking about, what you're talking about is one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, oh, yeah. so you have a one-on-one -on -one disagreement with, with someone. Um, when you're talking about the wider topic of, of fair game in, in paganism, that's not usually a one-on-one -on -one thing and has, has very little to do with personality or... Well, it's the model. It has something to do with needs. I would it's, agree it has something a lot more to do with various needs. Oh, it's... Um, mob mentality and animidity acting up, but I mean, let's... Yeah, because generally you, you have a group of people. You have a group of people targeting either a smaller group or a person. And, you know, and it could be, um, you know, like sometimes I see at, at festivals people who um, look more towards the hippie end of things and people who look more towards... Um, you know, a, like a preppier look, and, and they're kind of eyeing each other over, and it's interesting to go between the conversations because each one of them thinks the other group reflects badly on paganism, and they wish the other ones would kind of go away. Now, they're not usually actively trying to do that, but that's how they're kind of eyeing things, and it really doesn't, I mean, they may know people in that other group, they may like them, but they really kind of wish they would go away because they're giving them a bad look or they're not us. They're not what we should be. They're not living up to the ideal. Okay, these people so, confuse me again. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm talking a lot tonight, but now let's see. Does anybody here actually thinks their deity of choice cares what type of pants they wear? I don't well, think any of mine care if I whether if I'm even wearing pants. <laughs> right. Well, I have to tell you when when I wear a a smoking hot dress, Aphrodite's pretty happy with me. Yay. Damn Skippy, not just her. <laughs> <laughs> on an unrelated note, I love those pictures on you know Facebook with the snake. That's just. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun evening. Sorry, we hijacked. Oh, it's all good. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I know I got funny priorities and all that, but I just thought I'd ask that real quick. God, people are strange. Yep. That's why we have That's a podcast. Right. You said that like it surprises you. <laughs> strange what? makes people awesome. I just go ahead and decide that they are and that they're a large portion of them are probably going to be idiots and a large portion of them are going to think I'm idiots and then it's over and done with and I can get on with what I'm doing and so can they. <laughs> you know, in, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. In, in thinking about this topic, I think it comes down to, like many things do in human interactions, it comes down to power, who has power, who has control. And we like to humans like to share power with people we have things in common with. You know, do they look like us? Do they have the same ideals? That kind of stuff. And then you get in the defensive mentality of, I'm going to guard our power by pushing those other ones out. And, you know, you see it in animals. You know, you have, like, like a short tail squirrels are warring against longer tail squirrels. And, you know, one group has power and they want resources and that type of thing. And so they're going to naturally get very tribal in war against against the other ones. And, you know, people do that too. And I think, I think that's part of it. I think a lot of it has to do with power 
and wanting to only sh share perceived power. I kind of laugh at, at some people's concept of power. I'm like, well, really? You can have it. Um, well, honestly, if the, if, the, if the group can do that and be honest about it, I could at least respect that. But I think I'm not are, saying agree. I think people are un, unaware of that motivation within themselves and and within paganism one of the things that we kind of pass around as as some type of ethic that that comes around in our group is oh we're, we're very not much not into power over and so to admit something like that that we're acting on that <laughs> that we're acting exactly against some of our ethics that right. would be very tough for people to face but you're, of course, assuming that people have the self-knowledge to identify that. I don't think people, you know, you know, go off and say, hmm, I think I'm going to oppress people today. I mean, I don't think that happens. But, I mean, people do it, <laughs> but it's not from, you know, any, any volitional, intentional act. It's just that some people are a-holes more than anything else. I wish more pagans would take the effort to know themselves. I'm sorry. I got high yeah, hopes well. for the community. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> for Delphic Maxims. <laughs> so many tools at disposal for the community to get to know yourself, but now those tools well, don't apply to me. It takes a lot for people to be self-reflective because a lot of times people will do things without thinking, and for them to sit back and think about it, they're going to have to realize, oh God, what did I do? I did this, and I did this, and I did this. They don't want it. They can't handle it the guilt and shame that might be associated with it. They just want to shellac over it. It didn't happen. I'm just going to continue to be a butthead about everything and move on with life. Self-realization and reflection can be a very scary thing. It's supposed well, to be. It's, yeah, it's not always pretty when you look in the mirror. I mean, there's, yeah. there's times when, and usually, let's face it, when you're doing some deep self-reflection on yourself, it's not because you did something good. <laughs> I mean, you're kind of sitting there in a, usually in a mess that you created, and you're having to figure out how you got yourself into this mess and how you can not do that again and not be that person again. And it's usually pretty unflattering to really look in the mirror. It's, it's a hard thing. I mean, I'll do then you post cry. <laughs> do post-production on uh, yourself talking for an hour. Trust me, you get plenty of self-reflection there. <laughs> I used to have to do it when you actually physically cut the tape with a razor blade and taped it back together with the white tape. So, nice. Yep. Dating good myself. Old days, good old days were not always good. <laughs> right. I'm more a fan of reel to reel myself, but hey, let's not go there. We are not going there because Scurvy knows I will make him post produce this show that way. <laughs> uh, actually, I possibly could, but considering the possibility of acquiring that equipment today in a nicely working state without a lot of uh, extra effort, now that that takes up a lot of real estate. Great job, Dave. Now you gave him a goal. Next, you're gonna get a FedEx package. No, all this real to real stuff. No, I'm not that motivated. Real to real is expensive. It also it's means scary. that Scott's gonna be running around with a bunch of razor blades. I, I can see you on Craigslist later. I wonder if there's any stuff here <laughs> that I can get real cheap. Hey, I'll probably find it at Army Surplus somewhere. Don't worry. No, thanks. <laughs> We're not going to think about this more because in typical PCP fashion, we will think about it and then we'll realize we can do it. Yes. But, uh, that's right, yeah. That was almost motivational, Dave. <laughs> I'm just waiting for my phone to stop ringing. <laughs> now here's something I'm still trying to figure out. How can... And I, how can somebody who's stupid to that level honestly think they're being representing their community well? Well, maybe they're not representing their community. They're representing another community. And here's where... We should splice the episode because I'm about to rehash the last hour of discussion. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So during, <laughs> during the previous hour of this discussion, uh, we have discussed, discussed the topics of silly BS, that silence equals consent. Uh, people are worried about something reflecting bad on paganism, but at the same time, they don't want to do self-reflection. And I think this all culminates in the triggering event that spurred all kinds of crazy pagan crap that started me thinking about putting this episode together. Which is... Some silly guy in Salem doing some sort of ritual <laughs> for three minutes on TMZ against some kind of celebrity or something that kept saying something about winning. God. <laughs> Lordy. Not naming names, but I think you all know what I'm talking about. In but fact, I think he's going to be at the, uh, the Podkin meetup. Yeah, I, I didn't like Massachusetts before. <laughs> I thought somebody dropped a house on him and it was over. Have fun going if you're shoots. going. You know, I, I'm going to have to... Alright, I'll just say it. I'll say it. This is kind of an example of shit. <laughs> like, what just happened is exactly an example of, like, exactly what we just said is crappy. But I, I think it's kind of interesting because here's the way the pagan community took it, and I'm going to contrast it the way mainstream society took it. Pagan community took it as, oh my god, this guy's making a complete mess of our rituals. This is going to reflect bad on paganism. Oh my god, people aren't going to take me seriously anymore, let alone what I believe. This has set back my rights 20 years. Mainstream America? Man, that guy's kind of silly. What's wrong with the traffic? See, and that I, and I can understand like the discussion that people had within paganism of saying, "Wow, what the hell's going on here?" I think, I think it was. I think people got overboard <laughs> because you're right. People, people outside of paganism just didn't give a shit. They absolutely did not give a shit. Like, let's face it, the only thing they were focused on was Charlie Sheen. They were not focused. On anyone else in this story. Yeah, I think like four hours after this happened and it became big news, we're all watching the buy winning video on YouTube. Yes, exactly. So it wasn't, you know, I mean, but people were, I mean, within paganism, they were totally saying he needs to be out. I wish he was out. He's not us. He's blah, blah, blah. You know, and they, they did the whole spiel of, oh my God, he has to be voted off the island. Get him the hell off. Well, this story gets a little more interesting, but I want to go down your tangent for a little bit more. Um, I, I think that this is more pagan community. Like, the first PCP episode one was titled The Reality in Paganism. And so I got to ask, you know, the pagan community, do we, are we so full of ourselves that we think that the, you know, mainstream society cannot handle the reality of paganism? Honey, in some aspects, reality, yeah. They can't handle the reality of their own reality. <laughs> I personally I think don't think don't they give can. A shit. I don't think they care. Go you know what? It doesn't. It doesn't affect them. Well, I have to ask. You know, a question of the question. I mean, do we think of, uh, you know, that individual as representative of paganism? I mean, really? Well, this is this is kind of interesting <laughs> where the story goes because. Pagans say he's a representative of paganism, but he says he's not pagan. Well, it's statements like that that make that like send me to the mental hospital, where where you have yeah. people. I, I mean, and I deal deal with this on pagan space, you know, all the time of oh, people who say, well, <laughs> well, are you yeah. a masochist? I am <laughs> totally a masochist. <laughs> but I've, I've you know dealt with people who who you know, said things like, you know, well, I'm not spiritual, I'm not religious, but my wife happens to be Freya. You know, and, and people wonder why my brains explode. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Ma Ma I'm Mr. sorry. Karen, please. <sighs> but, is, I mean, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll just move on from that point, because I can't explain that. But, I mean, the, 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 the upshot is, I mean, you get things like a you know good chunk of the Ostrar and heathen community who just say you know what we don't want anything to do with the general pan pagandom because them people crazy and 
the uh, as opposed to you know dealing with it as opposed to saying look you know the the umbrella is is big there are some people who are on the far side of that there's some people who don't do what we do you know as opposed to identifying it and and you know parsing it out that way they just say nope it's not my island which I don't think is an appropriate way to deal with it. Yeah, because that kind of leads back to the problem we talked about in the last era, where people start kicking each other out of paganism. Yeah, or where they exit themselves. Yeah. They, you know, they say, I'm, I'm kicking myself off the island. Screw you all, I'm going home. Exactly. Right. Screw you guys, I'm going home. There we go. See, and I, go ahead, I'm sorry. See, and Dave, I, like, I understand what you're saying on that, David, because... You know, I'm also from a revived religion, too, and, and there's probably about half that if you ask them what religion they are, they will say Hellenus Mos, or they will say Religio Roma, or, you know, they'll say something like that, but if you ask them if they're pagan, they're like, they say, no, I'm not. Um, and for some of them, I think it's because they've looked at the pagan community and they've said, I don't want to be part of that community. Um, for others, they look at it and say, my religion is nothing like their religion, so... Like we have nothing in common. I don't. I don't understand this. Um, well, I think it's actually gotten. You, sorry. Go on. But when you're talking about um, when you're when you're talking about Christian and other people like that, and they're saying, "Well, you say that I'm representing paganism, but I'm not pagan." You know, we're in a religion that self identifies. So if someone is not identifying. And we're then claiming them, you know, that's kind of a funky little situation. Yeah, and that's kind of the situation I wanted to get to because, you know, like you said, it's self-identifying, but we also have a tendency of, well, if somebody's doing something kind of similar to what we're doing, we have a tendency to call them pagan, even if they're Christian. Yes. <laughs> yes, we do. Eh? And <laughs> as much as that's brain hurt. I mean, we don't have, we don't have this way of omitting people from paganism that explicitly do not want to be associated with paganism. That they don't want their belief system associated with it. They want nothing to do with it. Not really color me crazy. Ugh. Sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I was just like, color me crazy. But when you go around and you're casting circles and you want to take back the words of certain things, and you respond to pagan type topics, I'm gonna assume you're pagan. Yeah, especially if you're a writer for a pagan publisher. Yeah. <laughs> um, my bad. I wasn't inside your skull where I don't know what happens. Owies. Well, I mean, a lot of that discussion comes up um, uh, at the at the uh, the Covenant of the World Religions. There, there was that big thing a couple of years ago where a number of, oh, yeah. you know, where where folks tried to make this big schism of there's the uh, the, the the native oh, reconstructionists yeah. mm -hmm. versus you know the the pan pagans, and uh, you know, I, I, the the upshot of all that I think was just a giant steaming mess rather than getting anywhere, but what do I know? And it just shows you the, you know, the, the, the depths and the ways that people try to creatively acrobatic their way around these kind of issues. Now, I think it's going to continue to go on until we have a decent definition of pagan, which let's not even try to go in that. We've tried that a few times before. Uh, <laughs> oh, here's I, don't, I don't think we need to date uh, as much of an established ironclad definition Here, of paganism as much I'm okay go ahead here's from my personal experience and this is largely what turned me jerks but uh <laughs> when you have community acceptance do I really need to continue this sentence might as well I sure, mean, if, go the, ahead. If, the, if the community says yeah you're one of us I'm well yeah, you're you're one of them. I mean, it's granted not every member is going to agree, but I mean, it, it's, unless you choose not to be a part of them, if no. they say I'm one of them and I say no, I'm not one of you, then I'm not one of them. That's where you get in that muddy line again. Well, I tried. I tried that. I tried that for a while. It's not as easy as you think. What if we do something different, though, instead of being worried about 
clapping a definition on somebody and them having to adhere to that definition because I wind up on both sides of the fence. I don't, there, there are no one or two word designations that fit anything that I do remotely. But at the same time, I have people telling me, oh, you're part of this group. You just won't admit it because you're trying to be special, yada, yada, yada. What if instead of worrying about what definition to smack on somebody's forehead, instead we just don't worry about having to have that definition. And I know that probably sounds kind of lame and kind of stupid, but if someone says, okay, if someone wants to say, yes, I'm a Germanic heathen, or yes, I'm a Shintoist, or yes, I'm a Gardnerian Wiccan, or yes, I'm a Celtic shaman, yeah. fine, that's cool if, they, if that actually fits for them. But if you've got somebody that that doesn't necessarily, if we don't worry so bloody much about sticking the labels on, then it doesn't really, if nobody cares, it doesn't matter. Yeah. A while ago, there was a night, I um, tried to have a discussion with my father about what paganism is, or what is a pagan and we and we kept on trying to explain it in in terms of what it's not and and he kept on rejecting all these answers saying don't give me negatives don't tell me what it's not tell me what it is and so we analyzed the different branches and faiths and different things that pagans have embraced as being part of the pagan umbrella, which includes everything from Celtic Reconstructionism to Buddhism to Hindu to Santeria to Inter American to Shinto to everything else. And we, like, is it worship of a higher power. No, because Buddhism is more of a philosophy than a religion, but that's also embraced by paganism. Is it this? Is it that? Is it, we couldn't really quantify it, and it came down to the only legitimate universal definition of pagan that incorporates all the different umbrellas that pagans have embraced that we could agree on is they're all different people who have at some point or another faced oppression by Christianity. Well, that one's not... Now, wait a minute. I didn't agree with that one. I missed, was I in the kitchen talking to Gail and making fun of you guys when they happened? Oh, I that's think not you were, yes. That's, yeah, that's, what, I, that's where Dad and I wound up is that it came down to it that all these different faiths, all these different people have at some point been on the risk even end of a weapon or political manipulation or just scorn by Christianity. Well, the other uh, and 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 difficulty there is, um, you know, there there's a number of religions that are you know holy. They, they've been around for longer than he have. Uh, the, 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 let's try that again. Uh, the, the whole lot of, you know, the, the Buddhists have been doing their thing for quite some time. And, you know, for us to come around since, you know, the 70s and say, hey, you know, you guys are, you know, you guys are on our team. And that's not necessarily so. And I've, I, I, there, there's a whole, I mean, there's a whole lot of Buddhism that, that's fairly, you know, there, there's a whole religion attached to that, not just a philosophy. But there are also people who, be, you know, believe in Buddhist philosophy as well. But, um, you know, I, I, I sometimes kind of have to, you know, shake my head. It's like, oh, you know, of course those people are doing what we're doing. It's like, did you ask them? <laughs> I don't yeah. know that is necessarily so. Well, they want to be in your club. They might not like your club. Well, all of this is fundamental to what's being talked about in, in you know, Pagan Values Month, is that it's not necessarily even, you know, David is uh, Asaturar and, and Kara's I can't I don't even know the person pronoun uh, person noun for that. 
Awesome. You know, but I mean, I'm a Hellenian. Oh, well, that's that's much. What the? Um, you know, it's not even. We 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 try to say that it's about belief systems, but for the if we really take a step back, it's not. It's it's about basic values, having respect, having you know compassion, courtesy, the uh, the capacity for forgiveness. I mean, uh, good leadership abilities, confidence, uh, gratitude appreciation those are all big values and they don't they're not attached to any specific faith path and honestly speaking i i'm getting sick and fucking tired of hearing p- neo pagans talk about things in relation to christianity or some Judeo Christian something, or it always comes back. It's like that's the that's the religious equivalent to daddy issues. And <laughs> oh my it, god. Very good point. That's, that's, that's what good, it is. Actually. That's, and look at the people who Thank talk you. about that stuff. Yeah. Or even why are we even bringing it up? I mean like no offense to to people bringing it up, but but why? It doesn't need to even be in there because we are our own people. We, we, you know what, we are a family. But that doesn't, in the true sense of the word family, like, I don't get along with my family a lot of the time. Some of them are douchebags. Some of them are great people. But you find a way to mend problems you have between each other because at the end of the day, you're family, you have a set of values. You know, I mean, it's... I, I, I wrote, you know, in the chat earlier, I, I hope Dave had caught it, because, you know, we need to glorify people who take a stand of their own volition to come to the defense of others. Like what happened with me on, on Pathios. If Dave hadn't come up and and said, hey, wait a second on that post, or if I don't, you know, if if I don't come up on one of Kara's posts and say, hey, what the hell, when all of those, you know, wannabe pacifists, not even pacifist assholes are ganging up on her posts just because it's Kara, or just, be- you know what I mean? If We need to start saying, hey, Dave's awesome, because he's got big brass testes, and he's going to say something. Amber's awesome. Because she'll say something. She's just not going to let you get away with shit. And that's what we need to venerate. And we're not. We're venerating bitching. So, I mean, so... Sorry. I think shit. one thing that we need to um, understand as well is that because we live on such a global scale and because we con in contact with such an exorbitantly large amount of people that we normally throughout history would not come in contact with. Um, I don't think that humanity has evolved the mechanisms to deal with such a large group of people. And because of that, we place a lot of value on labeling and categorizing people in order to expedite the process of dealing with such a large group of people. Go back 200 years and the extent of people that one person would come in contact with normally was a group of people that everybody knew and had taken the time to know and was forced to on many different levels, economic, uh, spiritual, um, familial, had to get along with. Um, The problem is that now we kind of deal with people on a a Walmart kind of mentality where we go to the cheapest, fastest, quickest conclusion instead of kind of doing, and I I like food, so instead of like the slow food movement where you would plant your food and grow it and, and do stuff locally. The issue being we do not allow ourselves to get to know people before we allow ourselves to make judgment calls. And this takes effort and this takes time, which 
people are not willing to put in. But I think it's systemic of the problem that we're finding. Then you know what? Fuck those people. <laughs> that, I don't associate with fucking idiots. That's it. I, you know what? Pagan community is to me, everybody who's in this conversation right now. Uh, and that's, if that's all that it is, I'm fine with that. Because you're all not fucking idiots. <laughs> Scurvy sighs about all the post-production he now has to do. <laughs> one, of the reasons, <laughs> one of the reasons that I don't use Twitter is what? that I do not think you can get a valid opinion, statement, thought, or concept squeezed into 140 characters. That makes for minimalist sound bites that don't convey a valid concept. Unless, if you use your Twitter feed, those 140 characters to say, hey, go um, don't see my blog on this in which I expound on this in five pages. Well, unfortunately, the, the internet is awful and horrible about thinking in depth about things. Right. The, you know, uh, posts, uh, you know, in, uh, are, you know, you could, you know, post as many pages as you want, but people's attention span after a page is, is you know, right off, right off the cliff. It's the you cliff know, Facebook. Notes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but Facebook, you know, co comments, you know, how many sentences can you put into a comment? Usually about three before people, yeah. you know, be before people stop. And this is totally antithetical to religion where people are supposed to be thinking in depth. People are supposed to be analyzing and, you know, applying that to what they do, looking at the deeper issues. And it just doesn't happen. And when you talk about things of identity, folks freak out. And act stupid. Hmm. So here's a thought, though. Back towards the uh, topic of uh, and an open game. Okay. Now let's <clears throat> let's assume that I have a uh, deep-seated disagreement with who someone I haven't picked on yet. Sam. Okay. <laughs> How should I approach Sam about this? Let, let's try to set down a, a good example for people to follow. I mean, we're, we're saying a lot of don't do this, don't do that. I, I, I believe in KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. So, for those of us who have issues and we really need a laid out stupid, how should I approach Sam to say, I don't agree with this about you? Do you like the authors of wiser books and said incredible threats of violence? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, that's already been done, and we see what we saw what that got. Well, as long as the threats are credible, I guess it's okay. Because, you know, words put through an email definitely, you know, inflict fear and trembling. You know, don't make me give you any more idle threats, Dave, or, you know, I will. I will give you more idle threats. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the solution, Scurve, since you're picking on me, um... I think one word that we find dirty anymore in society and one that we really need to bring back into the collective consciousness is discretion. I really think we need to learn some discretion in the way we deal with people, in the way we handle what people say, and, and in the way that we react to what people say to us. Well, here's, here's my take on it. It's not so much discretion as uh, I saw somewhere I don't remember which chat room this was talked about in uh, it's one of them um, but the, the solution is basically back off for a day or two and think about it because the worst thing yeah. you want to do is be in an emotional state and in a state of response that's completely emotional and in the process you let lots of stupid fall out of your mouth <laughs> in in Hellenus most we have uh, one of the virtues that you try to cultivate is prudence which has a little different meaning than I think a lot of people, you know, use it now. Um, prudence was looking at what you were going to do and dividing it into two stages. And the first question to always ask yourself was, should you act? Is this the appropriate time to act? Should you do something now? Should you not do something? If the answer to that was 
yes, you should do something. Then the next question was, what would be the most appropriate thing to do? And I think we've lost step number one, and we half-assed step number two in that. We, we don't even consider, should I say something or should I not say something? Is my, you know, scurvy, should you say something to Sam? Is it warranted? Is it needed? Will it do anything? And then if the answer is yes, because it's, it's something for you guys to discuss, what's the best way to go about doing that? Okay, so we're, okay, well, we're going to say yes, okay? So we're going to say I got this huge issue with Sam, okay? So how should I approach her? I mean, should I blast her on a public forum? Should I, uh... Her issue is... Should I go and Battle say I'm going to stalk her to her... Stalk her family to their seventh generation and string them up by their entrails? Or, I mean, uh, help me <laughs> out with this. Depends what the issue is, I think, and what the magnitude of the issue is. If the issue is that... Is that Sam heard your lawnmower and brought it back with no gas in the motor and one of the mower blades is cracked, that's resolvable. And if, and if Sam was seen at a group eating where the point of discussion was to burn Scurvy's house down, I think that's a greater issue. So I think that the magnitude of the concern should be considered first. Okay, so we, we got that there. Not quite the path I was wanting to go, but... <laughs> Sorry. Personally, I'm a big fan of contacting a person privately and saying, okay, this is what I heard. Is this what you meant? Oh. I mean, I... I, I Sorry. <clears throat> go on. I really, when I work up the nerve to do it, I really try to be, make this productive because if I'm contacting Sam over this issue I have a disagreement with her about, I'd really like both of us to walk away the wiser. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, maybe Sam corrected me on something and she didn't even realize it. Yes, Scurvy, but you're also presuming that people in the general populace care about furthering their own knowledge base and also care enough about the other person that they're choosing to interact with for them to gain something out of it. Yeah. Well, well I mean, uh, I, noticed, I noticed a method uh, a certain role model uses, and he gives people something to live up to, and it seems to work out pretty good for him, so I'm, I'm going to try doing that, and I'm probably going to fail at it, okay? Which I probably am, but practice makes perfect, and I don't mind using our listeners as test subjects, so. <laughs> well, I, at work, we have a saying for at least online discussion. Um, the, the first phrase is e-balls, where people have brass balls when they're online, but as soon as you get them off the internet, they yeah. kind of shut up a little bit. Internet warrior. Yeah, well, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. But if you want to neuter some e-balls, talk to them over the phone. Not <laughs> Skype, not, not Google Voice, good old-fashioned telephone. Because as soon as you got their phone number and they got your phone number, people tend to shut up a little. That's if they want to talk to you. And if they don't, call them out on it. I've never had a problem taking people taking up my offer on that, though. I like that tactic. <laughs> oh, it's a great tactic. I mean, that's the only way you humanize uh, somebody. I mean, you, the, the, this, is the, this is the core problem with the Internet, is that all interactions are done one way over, you know, these little uh, dots between you and their humanity, and the monkey brain just won't accept that. And so, yeah. therefore, you get, you know, the, the extra set of brass nuts with your keyboard. Funny. You know, I would, I would say when I contact people privately, most of the time things can be resolved very quickly, very easily, because most of the times it's, it's simply a, a miscommunication, or you can at least agree to disagree and move on from there. Um, 
and, and rarely is it not something that can be resolved. Um, you know, about the only times it, it can't be resolved is if the person has no interest in resolving something with you. They, they just, you know, this is not what their goal is. You know, right. they're just they're they're just on a different tact, and there's nothing there's nothing you can do about that. You give it a go, and and that's what you can do. Um, about the only other time that it really doesn't work that well is um, if the other person is not agreeing to keep it as it's something to be worked out between you two, and you know they're doing the whole running around making people you know do the junior high thing of pick sides and. And that kind of thing. But there again, I think that's also, you know, that's also someone that's not not ready to, to be your partner in that. I think the other person has to be a partner. Okay, I'll, I'll bite on I'll bite on that. I like that. Hmm. Humanizing. I think in general we have this weird idea that whenever we have a conflict with somebody that they have to come away with both sides being positive and that's the only way and that's the way it must happen. We forget that sometimes, like Kara was talking about, sometimes conflicts are unresolvable. And yeah. sometimes you cannot work through it with people and that's okay. They're not going to see your point of view. And accepting that is mm -hmm something that people have this amazingly difficult time with. Which means coming away to my point of view because I'm right. I think, Amber, the other issue that people struggle with is not having any humility. Um, sure. I don't know where we get off thinking that, you know, I, as someone trying to sway somebody, um, am the be-all, end-all of the universe, and therefore I am right. You know, I, I don't know why we have lost humility. It's it's something, it's the, the probably the, the one thing that my, my Catholic upbringing has been positive in my life. But, you know, on top of trying to come away from a conflict with, with both parties more enlightened and trying, you know, to be human towards each other, I think also you need to think to yourself... Who am I to feel that I am the only answer, the only conclusion to this issue? And before you even start posting or start getting into a discussion, really think about, which I guess is the biggest problem, you know, is what you're going to say even important? And are you, you know, someone who actually has some kind of weight in this measure? You know, I was told a piece of advice, if you have a problem with somebody, think to yourself, does that problem, is it going to matter if I don't do anything? Is it going to matter in five years? If it is not going to matter in five years, then drop it. It's not really all that important. Just because it has offended you for the day or whatever, we get upset over the littlest, stupidest crap that doesn't matter within a week's time. But it's important because it offends us and how dare somebody say something that offends us. But, but I think walking into that field of fire, um, the, the issue is not so much humility as respect. And I mean, what, the, the whole point of conversing and, and the whole point of engaging discussion, it, it, it presumes that you are, in fact, discussing, that you are giving points and taking points and listening, and which is the, 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 core, the core issue, is that you're listening and speaking and going over things and thinking about it. But I think there are people out there who assume that the reason for them to do debate is to, you know, win. Duh, winning. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, that you know, winning is, is a condition of, well, I take my argument and beat you over the head with it until you submit. And, and that's, which, that's, that's a personality trait I see in some people that just bothers me to no end. They, they, they talk because they want people to view them as right. They're not engaged in a discussion. They're engaged in manipulation of people to believe that they are speaking the truth. Yeah, I would, you know, when I did 
pagan in politics. And, and I don't want people to think that that was a bad experience for me because overall it was a phenomenal experience writing for that blog project. And I really want to thank Jason for that opportunity on it. Um, you know, I... In, in presenting my view of something and then listening to other people's points of view, I did learn so much from other people. And, you know, other people, like Snooze, there is no way Snooze probably agreed with, I don't know, maybe two statements out of anything I wrote in an entire year. <laughs> However, it, but, you know, she would also comment and, and put her things. But great deal of respect um, for Snooze's comments loved the interaction, learned a lot, and helped me get a different point of view on some things. Same with other people. You know, I made some really good friends who absolutely do not agree with anything I wrote that entire year. But over the year, we became friends because we started to respect one another. We were listening to one another, and we were open to hearing what the other person had to say, even though we knew there was probably a 99% chance that we would not agree with one another on the topics. But we still saw that that was okay. Like, we, we were okay with that. We were all still part of this, this little sub-community within paganism, which was the blog project. And, you know, they were fine with, with me writing. Um, I was fine with them commenting. It, it was great. And, you know, many of the other blog writers... They rep represented different points of view. I loved it. I loved hearing their point of view. Absolutely loved it. Yeah, but you're also a strong enough person to accept that. And I know we have touched on it before. It's the idea that you have to be strong enough as a person that somebody else disagreeing with you is not going to shatter your reality. You're capable of most of us here, I don't think there's anybody that I can say otherwise, can take somebody else's idea and say, well, I don't agree with that because this is what I believe in. And none of us are going to have our realities crashing down because we can see the other person's viewpoint. There's a lot of people that are not capable of doing that or if they are or too terrified to be able to do that, they cling onto what they know so desperately that it's almost a, it's beyond fear. It's almost like this rabid terror that you can't have a valid point because they have to. And it's not that you are a bad person or whoever is a bad person, it's, and I think somebody had mentioned they were uh, discussing you and, and your point. It wasn't uh, talking about you. But it's that viewpoint. That can't be feasible. That can't be possible because that somehow makes what they believe in less. And well, you know, as, as, as pagans, we, we often say there's many paths to the divine. We, we get a little miffed at times at some of the monotheistic religions of this is the one true path you have to follow it. This is the only way. And at times we're almost smug in how we say, well, we see that there's many paths to truth. And yet we don't carry that through into our other aspects of life. We, we don't allow people within paganism to find their own path to truth, whether that is their tradition within within paganism, because I know um, recently, you know, Dianix, our, everyone's favorite whipping <laughs> girl at the moment, um, you know, or whether it's it's their views on politics or how they dress or, or whatever it is, um, all paths lead to the divine, except um, you still have to follow my path. Something um, I've been thinking about for a little while is <clears throat> um, let me try and put all these thoughts back together again. Okay, <clears throat> um, is that many people in paganism have come into paganism from somewhere else, predominantly from Christianity, and have come here with emotional or psychic wounds or scarring or going through a growth or learning process or 
whatever it is, there's they're trying to trying to sort themselves out in paganism through paganism, and some of these people may have found enough of a comfortable idea in paganism to cling to, like a shipwrecked survivor clinging to a to a to a piece of rock just trying to tread water. Um, and if you come up to them and question their shaky beliefs, but it's all they have to go on right now, they will defend and get irate that you're questioning them when really that's as far as they've come in working out what it means to be a pagan for them. That's where they are so far psychically, emotionally, psychologically, whichever. But they don't want to be challenged or questioned and will fight back if challenged or questioned. It's not so much that they disagree with what you are trying to say as much as they are not secure enough in their newfound faith to hold up their side of an argument and so they retaliate against your challenging them. Hey, Amber, break out the crickets. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> That's what we were missing. <laughs> yeah, um, we missed Amber's crickets. Um, wow, I just killed the wrong. Okay. Um, Good job! Does, does, <laughs> but does that analysis that some people in paganism who are still going through a healing process and don't want to be challenged hold weight? I'm still of the firm belief that if anybody's going down uh, <clears throat> most any path in paganism, and I think the only one I really put an exception on this is the uh, also true, maybe the, maybe the Hellenistics, but anything Wicca, anything like that, you should get some books on psychology and read them. A lot of people are attracted for the healing. Okay, yes, that's nice, that's cool. One, you're going to be... You're taken from the community when you do that. Not saying you're not... Un, not saying you're not welcome to do it, but understand that if you're joining a community for healing, mm -hmm. you've taken value from the community. Well, it's, it's not... I think someone's joined it for the purpose of healing... It's not like going to AA meetings or whatever, so much as they join it because whatever they had before didn't work for them now. Or, you know, it's not for healing. It's not like, if I do this for five years, I will get better, so much as it is that... I'm on this path now and just trying to see where this path goes. Mm -hmm. But I still think if you're studying paganism, read up on some psychology. Are please. pagans crazy? Yeah, I don't I think hope that's, so. that, that, that's something that, you know, a, a, a Ostrar, you know, specifically needs to do, but it's for anybody who, uh, who, who needs to deal with either themselves or others. I think you it's know, a good and, idea and, for everybody. I mean, that's yeah, pretty much. I mean, <laughs> if if you are part of a religion or, or spirituality, one hopes that uh, you know that you want to know more about yourself, that you want to think more, better, deeper thoughts, and you know, uh, make yourself a better person. One would hope that if you want to deal with other people, if you want to have a, a community, if you want to have a kindred, then guess what? You're going to have to have something called empathy. You're going to have to figure out how other people deal with things and then deal with it. Right. And reading up on psychology like any other form of self-introspection, if you're feeling depressed when you're doing it, yeah, you're... I'm not going to say you're on the right track, but yeah, you're, you're definitely doing something. 
So if you're reading See a through. psychology book and you're going, that's me. Oh, shit. That's me. Ooh, yeah, that's that me. Yeah, that one's I've got me all too. these problems. Yeah, if you if you if you're if you're asking uh, your friends and associates, am I really like this? <laughs> and they won't look you in the eye. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, Scarby, you know, think, toe shuffle. I think going off of what um, Scurvy and and Dave Karen were touching on, a lot of people, yes, they're looking through and saying, "Where is this path going to take me?" and and maybe developing from there, but not everybody. But I have seen a lot of pagans who, when they're talking to somebody who is interested in the path, a lot of times one of the first stories out of their mouth is how paganism saved them. Not literally in those words, but it's, well, I've come across it and everything made sense to me then. The skies opened and the heavens parted and rainbows and glitter fell from the skies. And yes, it's a very awe-inspiring moment for most people. But if you're a injured soul who is looking to feel whole again, hearing these stories, instead of saying wow, this is going to be work or it's worth looking into. It's that person has something I don't. I have to follow that person and have the healing. So scurvy, I, I will agree on the psychology, though. If they're at that point, I don't think they could handle the psychology books. I think that would make them a little bit worse. I don't know. I mean, sometimes you got to hit rock bottom before you can pick yourself up. And honestly, sure. best time... I know it's gonna. Oh, the worst. I'm going to get. A, I'm going to worst, get some dis. Or continue. The worst book to give to a hypochondriac is a medical desk reference. Yes. And it's also true that you can make yourself crazy online, and you can find other crazier people who will make you crazy as well. Oh my God! Preach it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the internet's really, really bad for that. Well, See, also, you know, you're you're asking, you know, people to read these, you know, psychology books and stuff when more than likely the IQ, I, I mean, even of just the app person will not, you know, <laughs> allow them to uh, retain any sort of attention span past, like, maybe two pages. Well, here's this deal when it, about IQ. It's as much nurture as it is nature. By and large, I mean, by and large, now don't beat me over the head for it with the exceptions here, but intelligence is as much nurture as it is nature. So, yeah, genetics and all that fun stuff plays an effect, but if you say, I'm going to sit down for 30 minutes a day and study some random topic here, 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 and here, and make out a list, and you do that for five years, guess what? You're smarter. In talking well, about the internet, but about, um, cause in, in, I had come across this because Star had pointed it out to me, um, your, your project Pagan Enough. Oh, I was going to hold off to like the third hour in this episode to mention that, just so we have Oh my God. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Well, it's, it's just so awesome. I, you know. It's, it's by Firelight. I'm excited about it. It's not I'm our excited. project. It's, it's by Firelight over at Inciting a Riot. If you go to incitingariot.com, this is the second year he's done it. He started it last year, which is how I remember, like, I remember seeing this and be like, why the hell do we need this? And I come back this year. Oh, we really need this. <laughs> we really need this. We really, really need this. He yeah. actually, uh, the, the the guidelines for the 2010 edition were up when I first wrote this. And he actually updated for 2011 um, in time between writing the show notes and us recording this episode. So this is updated for 2011. And I really like the new principles because the old ones kind of sounded... Uh, they weren't bad. It was just kind of the stereotypical stuff you would expect, whereas this seems uh, much more thought out, and that, that comes with experience, you know, especially when you get a lot of people talking about your project. Um, but I do like the five points for the, the five promises that you would make if you're participating in Project Pagan Enough for the year 2011. Um, 
For those of you who don't know, Project Hagen enough is a project put together by Firelight. Uh, I'm not sure exactly on the source of this, but basically it boils down to we need to put an end to people saying you're not pagan because of insert stupid reason here. You know. So the, the point of Project Pagan Enough is that people are pagan regardless of how they dress, how they speak, the political affiliation, whatever. You know. And that's kind of where he's getting it, but I really like the principles because it sounds more noble this year. Um, so I'm going to read off the five principles because as much as I know everybody hate around here hates bulleted lists, I think this is worth some airtime on. Um, so the first point is, you're pagan enough because you frequently, uh, you fervently, exp- uh, man, I can't read tonight. <laughs> I can never read. This is, <laughs> I, my reading is like mild speaking. It needs lots of post-production, okay? But it's worth, it's worth the effort. <laughs> don't drink in podcast. <laughs> I don't even Why not? Drink. <laughs> okay. Maybe you should be drinking. <laughs> Doctor's orders, hey, I can't. <laughs> that's for a giggle. Let me try and read these. This might be funny. Okay, can you right? read the first point? And, uh, uh, I'll try and read these. Then I'll read the second point, and, and let's see, because we'll probably let's do, do that. just about I'll do the par. third. <laughs> okay, you are pagan enough because you try fervently to explore what it means to be pagan and apply it to your life. Despite your physical appearance, personal tastes, level of experience, or other factors that other uh, others might use to say you are not pagan. Okay. Woohoo! I'll go so with the next awesome. one. Let's see how long <laughs> it takes me to get through point B. Um, you recognize others are pagan enough despite how they may look, act, or believe, as long as that person feels they are fervently seeking the divine on a pagan path. <laughs> Joe, you've got three. You attempt to debate those that have opposing viewpoints, learning from one another despite how passionate passionate the debate becomes. Instead of simply writing others off for not being up to your standard of pagan. Do it. Who's got four and five? And David, can you read number four? I'll read number four. You welcome, befriend, and encourage others in the pagan community despite their physical appearance, level of experience, age, or other physical or superficial characteristic. Who's got five? You should read it, Miles. You did a great job on the first one. I'll try again. Okay. Yay! <laughs> I love you. You promise to treat members of other religions and spiritual paths with equality, fairness, and grace, setting a good example for the pagan community, both in and out of the community, not judging the individuals based on fringe members of their same faith. So there you have it. The Five Promises of Project Pagan Enough by Firelight. I love that. Absolutely love it. So should we say on air that we're all pledging? Like, my name is Samantha. I don't care. I just don't make a pledge if you actually don't care. <laughs> um, Saying I'm not. I pledge the same thing as Dave. I mean, I think these are good things to live by. I'll go with this. I try. I, I thought about it, but considering how regularly I bork up post-production... Uh, commitments i'm no i'm not even gonna attempt to yeah but this has only deals with you know deciding if people are pagan or judging people on fringe members of the same faith just like no pagans in pennsylvania i'm safe then <laughs> just because you live in the same town as the silver rain wolf doesn't mean there's no pagans in pennsylvania <laughs> oh, no. Dave, i know a few pagans say- in pennsylvania dave don't make me say words that i have to beep out later <laughs> <laughs> now we're not saying she's not a pagan we're just saying we don't like her for reasons other than <laughs> what was mentioned <laughs> I mean the, the core that, value so of hmm? <laughs> I was going to say I mean the, the core value of, of saying that you know people are not how they self identify is for the most part in, in paganism it, it, it's a fool's errand 
you, you just can't do it. I mean, <clears throat> trying to get enough pe- to get ten pagans in the same room to define what it means, forget it. Ugh. Right. So it 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 you know trying to get play that that game is just ridiculous. You're not going to get anywhere. It it it's not going to end well, and you're just going to look like an idiot. So we have no excommunication. We don't. We're all popes. Let's think about something. Let's assume hypothetically uh, Dave, Miles, and I are going to uh, PSG, or PSG. Let's assume this hypothetically. In my case right. is a little more hypothetical than I like, but hey, I'm giving it my best shot. Okay? Now, Miles, if I want to spend the entire time there walking around in blue jeans and a t-shirt, would you care? No. Okay. Heck, that's what I did last year, and he didn't care. Okay. If I spent all five days walking around stunt naked, would you care? Might take a little bit of adjustment. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Well, well, obviously, you weren't there. It's like if a tree falls in the woods, do you have to hear it? I mean, let's be real. Let's, actually, well, <laughs> actually, I was I was enlisted, so I mean, group nudity is not entirely unknown to me. But um, <laughs> it, 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 it's locker room rules for me, so you know the deal. Okay, so that was the basis of your hypothetical. What's the question? Well. My view on that is, in that case, it's on me to adapt. Okay. It's a socially accepted norm. Right. At least uh, there. And it's on me to adapt. If I... Let's see. Um, let's... Just because this is... thought of something. Oh, no. We, could, we no. could end up. We could end up giving interviews to naked people there. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> That's what I've, with, I've interviewed people when they're naked, and at festivals, and you're just no big effing deal. You know what? You're not noticing they're naked until you're starting to interview them, and then all of a sudden you're sitting there going, "Wow, I'm talking to this person, and their balls are totally hanging over the edge of that chair, and I, <laughs> I can't even think what my next question is." Well, the tangent I'm thinking about is earlier we were debating video and all this stuff with that a while ago, and it's like you know maybe we uh, need to put that on the table as well. <laughs> are you going to yeah. let's, Paul let's and- not put everything on the table? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's spray paint your balls, bronze <laughs> or brown. No, I just like I just like post produce the stuff in public and all that stuff. It's fun, but uh, I must confess that this never occurred to me. This is completely off topic. This never occurred to me until I went to my first pagan festival where I was I clad for most of it. It never occurred to me before that weekend that I don't know how it doesn't hurt when I sit down on them. <laughs> so? I guess I've never thought yeah, of you're laughing. management. I've never had this issue. Oh, hi, it's <laughs> my My days. <laughs> <laughs> Moving <laughs> along. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We'll have to do a okay. genitalia oh, management oh, workshop at PSG. In that case, oh, we're yeah. all popes and we're also emperors in new clothes, aren't we? <laughs> oh my god. Dave, is that is that uh that, that workshop gonna be hands on? Because that that'd be, that'd be great. <laughs> if you wanna lead it. <laughs> uh nah, I'm not unless you're gonna give me some discussion. Hey man, we got ten more days to submit workshops at PSG. That was the time to do it. You mean it's going to be an interactive workshop? I'd really like to thank everybody for this after-hours content. By the (laughs) way, you know, one of the things they ask in the workshop application is how noisy will it be? So we have to address (laughs) this question before we submit the application. (laughs) 
<laughs> this sounds like a workshop that should be submitted to the, what's it called, Beltane Sacred Sexuality Festival in Maryland. <laughs> well, they've got one. Um, yeah, anyway. Where were we? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So I was reading a burp topic, and genitalia though. management. <laughs> yeah. But in a weird way, it does it does tie into the topic because about all of this, you know, ties back to fair game and and people's opinions. And there's so many topics that pagans are not talking about, as if they're like faux bashful about shit. I mean, oh no, we we can't talk about this aspect, or we can't talk about the fact that we don't agree in a civilized manner. Um, it, 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 in a way, it, it, it does, it does tie in, you know, I mean, you, I've seen posts where, you know, somebody's talking about sex magic, and then I nearly shit a brick because I was, I was laughing so hard because somebody posted way down on there, another pagan, who was like, oh my goodness, how could you bring this up? This is just giving us a bad name, and oh my god, you, you know, and it's... Double the points if they were Wiccan. <laughs> <laughs> if Gerald Gardner was alive today, he'd be rolling over in his grave. No, I think he'd be scurrying someone <laughs> in his grave. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> he'd be having a great time with it. If, if um, he was a, so I, I'm just saying, though, if he was alive today, he wouldn't be in his grave. I, I, I was making it funny. Um, <laughs> something else I've noticed, though. <laughs> and Tommy <I've> Gardner! <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I've seen this happen at several pagan meetings, festivals, workshops, where people are skyclad. This really is the gut root of monkey posturing. I've, if the person talking is naked, I've seen people take them more seriously and believe what they say if the person who is talking looks good without clothes on. They tend to believe statuesque people more than fat, hairy people. Hefty no comments. Very that's, no comment that's, on this one. <laughs> oh, no, but I, it's, you know. Well, does that mean we don't take anyone seriously at Bacon Festivals? Dun, dun. Oh, I will be doing everybody at, at the Pagan a PSG of service. By Scurry said clothes. it here. He's doing everybody at PSG. Um, <laughs> oh, that is an out of context, Scurry. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but this does get down to the root of fair game in that we shouldn't judge people if they're naked or not or how they look without clothes on or whichever. We should see the person inside. Because, as I think it was I, Groucho Marx said, when you strip away the skin, everyone is all like bones and guts and this yucky stuff, and we all look equally horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe the appropriate question is, what, what's the outer limits of fair game? Or, or I should say the, the anti-fair game. The, you know, what, at what point do we have to say, um, no, this, you know, th these things need acting upon? I got one. God. I got one. We kicked a guy off of our Yahoo group and told him he was banned from our regular group. Not just because he was a 27-year-old. I think I brought this one up before. Not just because he was a 27-year-old who was aggressively trying to coerce a 14-year-old into screwing him, but also because he insisted that they had a mystical millennium-old soul bond and because yeah. he was a Ancient Mormon Gaelic other kin half dragon half unicorn, and what? that she uh, was I a meant... half unicorn half dragon. So they had to get together to become complete other kin. I met. The I am not person. making that oh, up. She, I have it saved really? just in case we ever had to call the wow. cops. Yeah, I was going to say he, he admitted that he was having sex with a fourteen-year-old. No, 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 no. He was trying. To. He was trying, trying to coerce her. In. He was trying. using her. He was using yes. his 18-year-old girlfriend and her friend to try to coerce her into having sex with him. She had told him to leave him the hell alone, which is I'm the reason why we were like, uh, dude, you need to go on. I'm oh, still trying to get my head around that. Hmm? 
That merely <laughs> solicitation of a minor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's one of the reasons why I have that thing about it's good to be open-minded, but not so much that your brains fall out. There's a, you know, there's all, all, moderation in all things, including moderation. When one person declares that they just know they have an ancient, mystical, trans-ethereal soul bond with this girl who is 14, and they absolutely, in their deep gut soul, even if it is half Mormon, half Celtic, etc., 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 that they need to be having sex with this 14-year-old, somebody just has to slap them around. Fair game doesn't... That's, a lot with a brick. I know, think that's declaring yourself fair game. And we, we <laughs> had people, we did have people in the community, though, that were upset with us and said that we're being too judgmental. I, I have a question. Yes. How, how did he come to, to combine uh, Mormons with uh, dragons and whatever else that he thought he was? How, how did the, that happen? Honestly, we are not really sure. We didn't get past the point where he accused us of having bloodletting and blood drinking (laughs) sex rituals. Did he really get around to any of that? And I got tired of him way before any of that happened. Now, the whole 14 year old, the whole having sex with a 14 year old aside, I think if he took out the Mormon on there, I pretend to respect it. I wouldn't. I don't. Well, I yep. said pretend. <laughs> if nothing pretend else, pretend I'm, I'm res- sitting here. Pretend. I'm sorry. No, keep, keep in mind the two caveats I said. Take out the half Mormon and take out the sex of the 14 year old. I'd pretend to respect it by saying that I wouldn't publicly berate him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well when we're but, talking uh, about group group dynamics, when we're talking about okay, you know, it, we have a, a, a coven, a chat group, uh, you know, and you get more than two pagans in, in, in the room at the same time. You need to, there, there are unwritten rules. You, you can't have racist, pedophiliacs, you know, felons, uh, right. you know, folks who are going to destabilize the group just by their right. presence. You right. need to have people respect each other. That means that they acknowledge your right to exist and vice versa. Another example is that if someone feels compelled that they... Oh, crikey, I'm going to put this into words that won't sound ludicrous. If someone feels compelled to act as the... um, Act as a sacred prostitute for the goddess, and they feel that their duty is to have sex with as many people as possible to fulfill some divine credence placed upon them by the goddess, you don't honor that if you know that this person is HIV positive. They know it as well, but they still feel compelled to do this as though it's some as though the fact that they have this divine mission placed upon them will annex their HIV-ness or something. Did they mention which goddess? Wait, I'm a little bit confused <laughs> on what you're trying to imply, Miles. I mean, hmm? I, I'm a little bit confused on what okay. you're trying to apply. There's, there's prostitution within, you know, in fact, I, I'm a okay. firm believer in that um, that should exist and that right. HIV also doesn't end your life. No. And that you can't have, you okay. lose the ability. So I'm, I'm trying to, what? <laughs> um, the person in question whose name I have now forgotten felt compelled mission driven something to 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 fulfill the role placed upon them of being a sacred whore for the goddess Okay, they felt that it's their duty to have sex with as many people as possible not just to make themselves available for, but had to perform the act as often as possible, right? Which, okay, so, now, the um, priestesses of Aphrodite, I think I have this right, would sometimes serve in that capacity as, you know, as a medium, if you will. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with execution but 
where I had to draw the line and where I think they should have taken it upon themselves to draw the line is the person in question knew that they are HIV positive, knew that sex would lead to spreading that disease to others, ignored that completely in their desire to play this role. That you can't you're talking about unprotected the phrase, sex. Yeah, yeah. That okay, I, that's you all can't I'm beat around the bush, pardon the euphemism, of that. You have to say, no, <laughs> sit down, you're dangerous. Well, isn't it in, in some, some states that, uh, I, I don't know if there's precedent, but if you actively seek to um, infect other people, it doesn't matter if it's HIV or... or you know, malaria, yeah, if you actively seek to do it, then that's a felony? Because it, uh, it's considered attempted murder or, or I'm something I'm not sure like what it's considered, but I know there's precedent for that in New York State. There, There is, right? Precedent yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah, I remember that for uh, just, I think it was right after I moved out of New York City that that became precedent. Mm. See, to I me, that doesn't even, um, I'm sorry. If it's Pennsylvania, I think they considered it a form of murder. Whether the person died or not, it was considered that you gave them a death sentence, so you were prosecuted with one of the versions of murder. Well, I mean, if you act, you are, you're actively trying to do that, then yeah, you you are trying to commit some form of slow murder. You know, and the question that David had asked, and he, but you were looking at it in small group dynamic as far as fair game when is when is it valid to make someone fair game because they've done done something so horrific that the line needs to be drawn and the example you were giving was small group dynamic and and i think small groups have a lot more leeway not in acting punitively but in deciding who who is allowed in and who is not who has placed themselves outside of the group through their actions and I think as long as groups are very upfront about what what their group norms are, um, and people voluntarily join up, uh, I think that's fine. When we're talking about the wider thing of paganism, that's where it becomes a little bit more difficult. Because whereas a group could say, you need to be a vegan and agree to that, or you cannot be part of this group because this is our group ethos. Um, whereas you can't do that for all of paganism, even though there are vegan pagans who see that as that really should be a defining thing within all of paganism because that's an ethos, they believe, of the religion itself. Well, here's just my thoughts. Now, when it comes to declaring open game... Fair for, game. It's fair game. fair game. Get it right. Yeah. Fight me. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm now, sure when it comes to the like to do that. Oh, thanks for that visual. But okay. <laughs> but <clears throat> when it comes to declaring fair game, as we discussed, what it was earlier, like what Kara experienced, uh, no, that's just not part of the game plan. I'm sorry. Well, the fact of the matter is that we we sh really should not be a a police force. I mean, no. if we have to, uh, you know, if, if we, we decide that, you know, we are the, the sole bearers of, you know, the entire movement, um, no. <laughs> no. Nobody's elected anyone to, to do such a thing. Nobody has empowered anyone to do such a thing. No, there, there's been enough issues with trying to define what the community is, let alone, you know, what it means and, you know, try to enforce that. So... Uh, you know the, the the best that we could do is um which, which i ha have attempted to do at at you know very very hugely bad effect is hold people accountable to their own traditions their own words and say look these things that you're saying are inconsistent if you say that you are a um you know a a, a hellenic pagan period and you're worshiping, you know, uh, other gods and not saying that you're eclectic, then, you know, guess what? There, that's an inconsistency. You know, you should figure that out and maybe communicate that, 
you know, I'm, I'm not saying that such people don't have, you know, a right to exist, quite the opposite. But, you know, the words that they're using are, you know, the, the, they're, they're not adding up. And maybe they should do something about that. But not to say, you know, sorry, you can't exist. <laughs> no. Not the way right. it works. Yeah, and, and like, I, like, I personally don't ever see a reason, like, I, I don't think there's ever a reason or an excuse for, to classify someone in fair game. I, I don't see that. Um, in the example that Snooze gave, you know, I ran across a similar thing myself where we had someone who was a predator. They were looking to prey upon um, children under the age of consent. You know, it's an adult male. That's what he was looking to do. Uh, you know, to me, that is not a paganism issue. That is a legal issue. He's commit, you know, he is attempting to commit a felony, and he's a disgusting human being. And I'm going to turn him into the police, and that is exactly what I did. Um, if if people around me are doing something that is illegal and harming others, notice I use the two things together because if sm someone's smoking a joint by me, I'm really not going to throw a gasket. I I just don't give a shit. Um, that is, those are legal issues. Those you need to turn over the police. That is not an issue with our religion. That's just an issue of the human condition and what humans do. So that's how I look at it. There's, there's no reason for fair game, ever. I agree with you on the, the fact that I don't think it's an issue of paganism. It's, it should be a, an issue of society, period. The problem that we run into are people that want to make it an issue of paganism because they want to try to pass it off as, oh, well, this is a legitimate tenant of a pagan faith, that it's okay for him, for us to do this. Therefore, even though it's against the law, if you try to limit us, then you're being intolerant, you're being judgmental, you're being da-da-da-da-da-da-da. And this is one of those things where, is one of the reasons why I would rather be an unenlightened devolved barbarian and be a judgmental bitch and say, I'm sorry, I do not accept your take on the sphere of paganism because you're saying that it's okay for you to, you know, to do this because that's your personal take on your belief system regardless of what the laws of the land are or Something that some things are just recognized as a good idea in society. Um, having sex with a five-year-old, just simply not a good idea Ew. on several levels. Uh, some practical, some ethical. You can find somebody out there somewhere that will try to pass that off as well. That you know, there's a there's a mystical reason for this or da 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 da. To, and I'm sorry, I'm going to say that it doesn't have jack crap to do with any kind of belief system. It's somebody trying to mask their own freakiness. And that's an extreme example. But there is stuff that does fall into that category. And I would rather be, an, I would rather be a lesser person and a less developed person, if that's the way someone wants to cast it, and call bullshit or call no, I don't think so. I'm sorry. I do not accept you on that. As opposed to having to give them some sort of credibility or credence just because they whipped out the P word. You know, people can practice their religion however they want. I have no problem with that. However, if they're going to uh, sexually abuse a child, they can practice their religion from inside a jail. They're, they're more than free to do that. They can go for it. And that's, that's just how I, I look on those things. Oh, I wouldn't even go that far or whatever. As far as I'm concerned, they can practice it from whatever cliff I dump them off of with sharks at the bottom. <laughs> but at the same time, what, what I'm getting at with that is I agree with you on those, prim on those premises. Where I feel like the problem is is that the pagan community is not, at large, is not at a point where a lot of them feel comfortable drawing a line somewhere. Well, it's funny because they're more than willing to police the bullshit things that don't matter. But you are right that in these larger topics, people suddenly get pretty damn skittish. 
you know, suddenly, suddenly all that, that little judgmental crap that they had going on before just kind of goes away when it's a real serious situation. I swear I think they're playing Russian roulette with their brains on it half the time. I've yet, I, I can't even find a discernible pattern in some people's reasoning with it. But I do see it as, I see it as being a difficulty in exactly what we're talking about here, about when something is fair game and when something is not. When you look at someone and you're being the pagan pope, and when you look at someone and you're calling a pile of bullshit, bullshit. Thank you. Yes, right there, <laughs> right there. No, no, no. That that's because people don't like that. You know, when people can't, it's, it's, I've seen this in the banking community. They can't identify between somebody's calling them out on their bullshit because they're being a dickwad, and somebody is is being you know unfair to them. It they can't differentiate anymore. You know, I mean. And there's certain things that, I'm sorry, you forfeit your, your right to exist. Like, for example, <laughs> pedophilia, murder. There, there are certain things that you just give away your human card. You know, I, but that's just me. So. Now, as much as I, I don't agree with the idea of pedophilia, I will say that a lot of it is, it can't, it's not always the person's fault. And that's not a get out of jail free card. That's a, some people have gone through amazing amounts of trauma and that's just the way that their brain is wired and they have to make a conscious effort against that. And I think people are forgetting the fact that there are people that are screwed up that do do a whole hell of a lot of mental work to stay on the right side of things, but they will always be that messed up person. Yes, and at the end of the day, we have to say, look, for the benefit of the community, for the benefit of small children, you are going away far, far away as soon as possible. We'll give you a 30-second head start. But the reality is that I, I, I don't think too many people are going, you know, yay pedophiles. And that's not a terribly, <laughs> uh, you know, a, 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 a real issue. I mean, the, the, the real issues that I think we come up with is, you know, somebody's talking up at a, at a festival. You know, breaking the laws in in minor ways that one could say, well, you know, it's a, it's you know, it's not hurting anyone. You know, what's the big deal? But natural consequences has a real nasty way of creeping up. I mean, PSG had to move campsites because the yep. campsite that they were using for a long, long time at you know, not even the PSG festival. It was one of the other things that they were doing, but they got busted. And the campsite got, uh, you know, they got their license pulled because they they, they were permitting folks to, uh, uh, to, to to use drugs with, you know, the, the, the knowledge of the campsite. And the reality is that if people, if we as pagans have public festivals, have festivals on, um, you know, uh, on on land and available, then guess what? We're going to be held to the laws of the land and... If we see people breaking the law, then we kind of need to step up and say, look, you know, you guys can do whatever you like within the walls of your home, but here, not cool. Otherwise, everyone else is going to go down as well. It's well, just being inconsiderate to your neighbors. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's it's a, okay if you sink yourself, but you're not allowed to sink people that don't have any say in your behavior, that don't have any way of saying... I, you know, yay or nay over what you do. That's not fair when you can trash someone who hasn't had any choice in the matter. Well, kind of a flip side to the you must all abide the law of the land is that there are some different rules that apply at pagan festivals that don't apply in Mundania. Um... Not to sound like I'm always harping on the same topic. I don't want to sound like it, but... You're going to get into naked it, stuff, aren't you? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> well, no. It is. All right, hold on. i got to close my eyes so I can picture it. Okay, I'll go. tell you management. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. It is that at... Um, 
PSG last year, yes, I was skyclad for a good part of the festival. Yes, there were little kids running around there. Yes, they did see me that way. Now, if I was to walk down the road here and walk past an elementary school naked, yes, I would be arrested for indecent exposure. But at the Pagan Festival, it is permitted. So there, there is some, there is some bending of the law to allow for customs that we choose to accept as, well, acceptable, that Andania doesn't agree with yet. Um, so, like, if the, if the, if the, if the county government busted the park because they, because they allowed people to do drugs there, would they also bust the park for allowing people to be naked there? Uh, there was a woman that showed up at the gate at FSG one year when I was working gate registration that uh, that was exactly what she was trying to do. Um, her deal was that she understood that it was a, you know, clothing optional event and she understood that people under the age of 18 were being allowed inside the event. And she was absolutely going ballistic on the phone to, I, I'm not really sure whether it was a lawyer or someone else in a legal capacity, but she was waving a camera around and going on and going on and going on. And that's not the first time I've heard about something like that happening. And I've, I've had people question me, you know, how on earth can you possibly, those, you know, those children are going to be... Yeah. Scar, quote unquote, scarred for life. It's got. It's like God forbid, deliver me from the fray. Scarred for life. And I've I've asked people, okay, what's the difference between that and where countries like Japan, where an entire family going to a hot springs is is perfectly normal, or go all going swimming together, and it's not been part of the culture to wear bathing suits is perfectly normal. And that, that hasn't really cut any ice with them. I still think that there's a fine line between what an individual culture considers normal and what it doesn't consider normal. And the things that you look at most cultures and someone has said, okay, this is just plain not a good idea. And I think I think you can draw a line there. I don't think it has to be, well, if we throw one out, we have to throw it all out. And that's what I think people have the biggest problem with is is the fact that you do have to you have to think or you have to go ahead and commit to an idea to where your line is going to be. Yeah. Um and PSG adults of minors have to sign a waiver saying, Yes, we are bringing minors to this place, yes, we understand that they might see people without their clothes on there. So there, I think that the adult, the legal parent or guardian of a minor speaks for them, signs a waiver, acknowledges that this situation might exist. Most of them also have a rule that if you are going to be within view of the main gate or the main road or whichever, you have to conform to the blue laws of that state. Look, I cricketed again. Do the crickets. Do the crickets. <laughs> <laughs> we just need to have that as a sound bite. She, she does. already did. Yeah. yeah, I just copied this as a soundbite. Like in the chat <laughs> room, it needs to be a chat room accessible soundbite. Sweet. By the way, Miles. Hello. We're working, we're working on a side project, and your new name is Teacher. My name is not... <laughs> oh, jeez. My name is not Teacher. My father's a teacher, I'm not. I'd That's like cool, to welcome huh? everyone to the fourth hour of the Pagan Centered Podcast. <laughs> fourth hour? Jeez, mate. 
We're in overtime. <laughs> Indeed. It's 10.30 and I'm still online. I'm a rebel. You crazy rebel. <gasps> you mad crazy satanic rebel you. Yes, I am. Ooh. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Blar. But I don't want this episode to be too idealistic. I want to leave on a note that it's okay to mock people. Like, the people, like, uh, me and Kara were mocking one day with this horrible, horrible toupee. Like, oh, my God, wasn't yeah. even the same color as the guy's hair. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and there was, I, there was, like, a rim of bare skin around it. Yeah. <laughs> I, it was like a hat. It was like a beret, actually. I heard a great phrase on NPR over the weekend. It was on Wait, 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 Don't Tell Me. When Hindu Siegel was t- talking about... Um, Donald Trump and what's his name, Mitt Romney. Um, he he was trying to think of something they have in common besides all the usuals, and he I um, the comment he made was something along the lines of whatever it is that's living on Donald Trump's head probably gnaws the wood of whatever it is that Mitt Romney's hair is carved from. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good one. I know, that was funny. I, I mean, I, love- I don't want to get too aggressive because now that I'm interrupted, everybody's going to be like, PC, peace, road, and hatred. Uh, no, I mean, <laughs> the point is, is not to dislike. Disliking someone is not grounds for pretending that they're not pagan or saying they're not pagan or thinking that the phrase real pagan is a justifiable phrase or yeah. the, you, names, don't use a religion as an insult like you're acting like a Christian, you know, crap like that. Um, and people make novice mistakes. That's also not a reason to call someone not a pagan. Not, people make sense. Um, but keep in mind that any disagreement is also room for opportunity for clarification, growth, or discussion like Kelly Mays. <laughs> No comment. <laughs> As I said before, all things were in within acceptable parameters. Yeah. Well, and I think it's okay to talk about, you know, is is this, you know, is this behavior that we think is ethical? Or yes, sometimes you know. Yeah, you're. I mean, you're doing a little little mocking on something that's kind of funny, um, well, or you're just giving people the helpful hint at festivals of, come on, people, really, you got to shower. I mean, you really got to shower. I'm telling you, and if you want to give a please give out, don't I hug me. Please don't hug me if you haven't, because like I'm short and I'm right at your armpit level, and it's just it's bad. If it's you're very a vendor bad. at a pagan gathering, be the one vendor carrying deodorant. <laughs> oh, I'm telling just you, buy yeah. Buy a crate of it. <laughs> if it's for PSG, just buy a giant pallet of it. <laughs> exactly. Well, here's something else to think about as well. And ask yourself this occasionally: Am I making actions that could possibly make me a subject of public ridicule? Yes. Well, oh, I wasn't supposed to answer again. that. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too, Kara. <laughs> Foresight. It's not just for breakfast anymore. Oh, trust me. I mean, it's a certain... Everybody's entitled to a certain level of douchebaggery. I mean, it's can't take that away. But to be completely honest, I believe that ridicule is part... Like, it's a normal part of society, of any social structure. When someone is acting outside of the accepted social norms of that society, they're going to get ridiculed by that society to get them to fall back in a line with the rest of the society. Yeah. Like, so that's kind of the point I, I'm trying to make is that yeah, you know, try to pretend that oh we're not going to say bad things about people is a laughable thing because you're going yes. to do it. You're going to, maybe a faster do it in private, but you're still oh. going to do it. The point is not to take it too far. If you do something funny, expect someone to make a joke about it. See, this is what it is. Like fail um, laugh off with yeah. Well, Fuck you. In England, <laughs> in in middle ages, rural England, it was very common to have a village idiot, and the reason they had the village idiot was that everyone needs to have someone else they can laugh at and or feel 
better than. Uh, you know, my life might be crap, but I'm doing better than that other guy over there. And so, in a way, the village idiot was a morale builder. I, th I want to dig up a quote from the 1980s. Well, it might be from the early 90s, but I think it's an excellent quote. I discovered this after initially putting together show notes for this episode. And it's from Mr. T. I like Mr. T. And his <coughs> quote is, We do not hate the fool. We pity the fool. You <laughs> 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 made him sound like Shakespeare for like half a second. Yep. <laughs> I don't know how many Christians have have who's seen me heard me talking heard me trying to explain to them why I feel the way I do about my faith and they just smile and shake their head and say, I'll pray for you. If you want to have fun, say let's pray together. Mm. Oh, I gotta use that. I gotta do that and see what Actually, they do a, with it. A, fr a friend of mine told me to say that and all that, and for him it works awesome because mm -hmm. the people like <laughs> they get all sort of the warm fuzzy and all that. But I say that, and people have panic attacks. Yeah, well, I that's just because you predict bad. everyone's death. He hasn't died yet, okay? It's just <laughs> that just one time. Just whip out a army knife. Well, yeah, eventually we'll out. all become worm food. Well, there's, there, there, so, some of us sort of make the exception and sort of become uh, space dust. There's been a few of those on the book, so we got honor. We got to keep that in mind. But yeah, you, you, by and large, you're right. Go, yeah, Jerry. Jerry? Jerry Garcia. Oh, he's in orbit? He, if I remember right, he split his up between going into orbit with Gene Roddenberry's and uh, going into the Ganges, part of it in the Ganges. He's all over the place. That's cool. So judging on the connection of uh, Amber's intranet, tonight's weather in, uh, in uh, Frisco, North Carolina <laughs> is uh, sunny, Probably clear, it. and you can see all the stars tonight. Yes, actually. <laughs> if it's sunny, you can see all the stars. I want to go. Yeah, right? Sunny at 1043 at night? Wow. It's a crazy weather down there in North Carolina. I am I really don't want to extend this debate another hour and a half, but I do want just to ask, um, in the onset of her game and allowing people the right to practice their version of paganism as they will, and so on. How do we feel about well, let me those, people, those people who claim to try to use heathenry as a soapbox for their white supremacist neo-Nazi standpoint? A-holes. But it's they're a-holes because they're white supremacists, not because exactly. they claim to be pagan. <laughs> I don't they use their faith as an excuse to promote like, stupid, Racism. bigoted crap. I mean, come on. Racism. Uh, the fact yeah. is, they're using their agenda uh, as as a as a political tool, and it has nothing yeah. to do with the religion. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's, to me, that comes under the same thing as what we were talking about before. It's not so much exactly. a PHA issue, and it I, and I use the term PHA, pagan heathen alternative spirituality, just to lump as a lump for everybody without actually lumping everybody. To me, that's not a religion issue. That's someone dressing. That's someone using the window dressing of a religion to clothe their own deal or their own agenda. And there are people that will say, well, you're trying to say they're not heathen, you're trying to say they're not pagan. No, I'm saying that what they're doing is borrowing someone else's costume. Mm -hmm. That might be the same thing, but until they can actually show me at least something akin and in common, especially when you're dealing with a religion that does actually have some older recorded precedent like you know you guys have the sagas and the eddas to pull back to pull from until they can show me some relationship with that other than just throwing a bunch of names and runes around on a t-shirt mm -hmm. yeah i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna fair game that one and you I know I, I don't hmm? you know when when you're looking at people's religious beliefs 
if they place impositions on themselves or restrictions on themselves, and these are voluntary things that they are doing just of themselves, they are not applying them to others. I don't care. So if one of your things is a dietary restriction, I'm going to think you're crazy for not eating bacon, but really I don't care. Same thing with a white supremacist. If, if their view is you can't be in my little group and unless you're white, I, I don't care. I really yeah, don't. We can tolerate it the dietics. Affect me. I, I, yeah, well, no, I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about tolerating somebody with what they do in their own living room. My issue: if somebody wants to stand in their own living room or their own front yard or ride around in their car yelling, you know, niggers are garbage. Whatever, you know, pick pick a group, any group, whatever. My issue with it is. Again, when, you know, you have someone saying, well, you know, if you aren't such and such, if you don't match our template, then you can't be. Or when they try to assert that belief into a civil social sphere outside of their own group, which that might, the occasion that I've had to look at someone who was pushing a neo-Nazi agenda and clothing it in heathenry is exactly that, is someone who has a political agenda and wants to affect secular civil society with what they are trying to pass as their religion and claim religious tolerance to do it. Yeah. And when something like that starts affecting people outside of their group, yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call fair game on that one. Mm-hmm. Until so you want to hunt them to down and kill them? <laughs> God knows. <laughs> Honey, I'm out of room for bodies now as it is. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to hunt them down and kill them. I'm just going to tell them, shut the frack up. I don't want to listen to you. And no, you can't play in my sandbox. They can <laughs> play in somebody kinda... else's sandbox if they want to, but they can't play in my sandbox because well, I don't want to have to clean that stuff game, up. Though. I mean, fair game is you yeah, are exactly. actively trying to destroy the person. Yep. Yeah, and that's, and that's a different too thing. Too much effort, unless they, unless they just plain won't go away. But that's an important point right there that, that Dave and Kara are trying to make, is that people who have a good head on their shoulders associate fair game with, you've made an ass of yourself, I'm allowed to say it, you know? Um, but fair game is actually defined as, like Dave and Kara are saying, trying to actively destroy someone, which is completely different from what you know what you or I would do yeah this is more than kicking them out of the group and saying you can't play in my sandbox and making fun of them and not agreeing with them this is more no matter where they are on this planet you will hunt them down and you will actively destroy their life you will pursue their sources of income and, and, and destroy those you will ensure they have enemies to ensure that they get killed those kind of extreme things okay that might have been when I was trying to herd dogs my bad (laughs) (laughs) i mean it goes back to the quote deprived of property injured by any means without discipline uh tricked sued or lied to or destroyed don't lie to them yeah but that's that's just lying granted if you lie to me i'll i'll that's bad juju right there but Ahead, like, yeah, from a satanic perspective, um, it would depend on the person and the severity of the crime. Like, if they did act something actively to really piss me off, or just just so blatantly wrong, like, I don't know, let's say a group of skinheads went out and beat up a bunch of black or Hispanic kids. I would actively set out to destroy them. I don't give a shit if they worship Odin. They're going to be worshipping my foot up their ass. I'm getting so many entertaining sound bites out of this. <laughs> <laughs> but would you be setting out to actively destroy them, or would you be setting out to bring them to justice? Truthfully. I mean, we all like to say, yes, we'd, we'd kill them, we'd do it. But really, we wouldn't. It depends if it was done in front of me. Like, I... Like I said, it just depends on the situation. Yeah, I've known Ashley long enough to know that she would do that. But there's a difference between seeking justice and standing up for people and actively seeking to destroy someone else, which is a punitive vengeance act. Okay, I can see where you're coming from. I guess it would be more of a justice thing. And that's what pagans have access to, though. 
<laughs> Don't fear, Ashley. What? Vengeance. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> winning. <laughs> winning. <laughs> Vengeance is winning. Well, you know what, though? Kara, that's a, a good question. Yeah, I, I think when it comes to the pagan community, that's something that we ourselves, uh, or not we, a lot of people in the pagan community are, are, are not really ready to to deal with because we do have the capacity to, you did what? Your ass is grass, you know? I mean, there, there are, you know, I, I remember saying this before that, I don't, I, I'm obviously not a Christian who has this all-encompassing, compassionate, loving God. My gods can be nice sometimes, my gods can be loving sometimes, but my gods will also rip your face off and make you eat it, you know? Um, and I think in that respect as well, you, you will have pagans who will try to be, to try to actively seek justice, and then you'll have ones who actively walk the path of um, retribution. And to I'm not I'm not saying that you're nay saying it, but I think mm-hmm. you do hear a lot of voice, uh, a lot of lip, really, on nay saying retribution and vengeance in the pagan community. And I don't know whether to look at that as baggage from previous religions or to look at that as, yeah, maybe that's not a good thing you want to have in your life, but if you're, you know, who am I to say? I've never, I've never been in the situation where I've had someone destroy my life or, or, or kill my, my family that I would even need to contemplate such things, you know? Mm-hmm. So who am I to say? And that's, that's not my kuleana, that's the person who's in that position. So, I think there's a line there again where we're more standing in line and everybody's probably getting tired of standing in line but um, you've got a again individual situation where does the line fall between taking vengeance on someone and getting to a point where the only way you can prevent this person from doing any more harm than they've already done is to completely disable them. It's, you know, that sometimes there's a line there too that what one person would call destroying someone, someone else would say, look, we tried this, we tried this, we tried this, he kept coming, this was the only thing we could do with it. Normally, and not always, but normally, if it's getting to that point, normally there's legal alternatives. Yeah, I'm not necessarily. Ta- I'm not necessarily talking about killing someone, but there's people walking around all over the place right now that should be in jail for assault, abuse, various types of harm that don't go because. Either someone won't prosecute them, someone won't, won't move forward with it, um, and I hear people in the pagan community. Um, some guy that beats the crap out of his girlfriend, puts her in the hospital, whatever. Some chick that sets fire to her boyfriend while he's asleep. And nobody wants to testify when the police come asking questions because, well, we have to pro- we have to hang together. We have to have pagan solidarity. We can't take this. We need to keep this in the community and... and solve it within the community. That solves and like the Catholic Church with the priests and the boys. Yeah. That yeah, a lot of it going so well. around. It does. Yeah. But there's people that think that way. And they'll you know, they'll let stuff go because of that mm-hmm. notion of solidarity. When to me, once you get to that kind of behavior, you've taken yourself out of the realm of the community village or the metaphorical village, so to speak, and put yourself in the realm of like of civil law as opposed to, or you know, a religious community or a belief or a lifestyle community. Well, here's a uh, something I like to tell my would-be friends. If and it goes something like this: If you want me to be your friend, please don't put me in a situation where I have to lie for you. Good man. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Um, I've honestly had people go to physical blows with me saying that 
I really dislike lying, and so so I really hate it when people put me in this situation or ask me a question where the only legitimate answer that I can give is one that I know to be dishonest. I hate that. Um, but about the about the question of um, yeah, the, the recap from eight and a half ago, my brain's becoming mush. Um, about um, t- about taking someone down and if it's our place, or if we should all hang together and and pretend it doesn't exist, and all that. I'm seeing a comparison between <clears throat> um, let's, let's see. Imagine that a that in a um, tavern, someone finds out that person A is abusing or beating or something person B and they feel it should go to the police but they don't want to because they don't want to make the fact that they're pagans and bring all of that out into the open because they don't want the general mainstream to think that this is how pagans behave or is it like people um you know, there's some there's some yep. Every little, time. really private. Hmm? Every Hermit, time. almost there. Okay. There's some. There's like little tiny private acts of Christianity that don't want anybody else's influence in what they do. Not because they fear exposure, but because they don't want contamination. I think we. <laughs> You do tend to, f- to fear the exposure, t- tend to fear, um, uh, I want to say being found out about, being, you do seem to fear the spotlight, the media attention, because we don't want people to tell us that what we're doing is wrong, I think, as opposed to those little Tiny fringe faiths who fear contamination. Well, let's see. If I wanted to establish a reputation that my community polices itself, if my, if somebody in my group I find out is, especially if there's good evidence, is being abused by their spouse, yeah, police will be called. Will it be ugly? Yeah. But the sooner you root that out, the better it's dealt with. Yeah. Now, at a I certain agree. point in time, granted, there's some things you should do first. You know, like talk to them, stuff like that. But at a certain point in time, if it's getting to the point where you can say, hey, Derek so and so is going to show up with a black eye every second Thursday or off week from pay week or whatever yeah you that's when you can call it into the police are the police going to do anything well it's always a crap shot I hope so mm. it's a crap shoot yeah. but you're at least it's not your crap shoot you did what you, you're doing what you're supposed to do the fact that someone else doesn't do what they're supposed to do or something gets in the way of them doing what they're supposed to do is a different ball game. And the fact that if you step forward and identify something like that and go with the person, the police will be much more likely to accept something like that. Just saying. Mm -hmm. It's a possibility, but that's... That's getting into a lot of hypotheticals and crap shoots. That's what life's about. <laughs> oh yeah, like it or not. Yeah. How what's how does the quote go? Integrity is doing the right thing when no one's going to know that you did the right thing, 
or character is doing the right thing. Something doing the right thing and knowing when no one's going to know that you did the right thing. Uh, that's character. There we go. Hey, where's everybody going? Sleep. Do you realize like how late it is? Really? It, it is, is 11, 11 o'clock on the East yeah. Coast. Yeah, I know. Yes. I have to be up at 5, yay, blah, blah, you know. Oh, quit your you know whining. That. I need to be up at oh. 3, and I'm still podcasting, you whiner baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Wow. Is it where you are? Huh? Ashley's in the same time zone as you. Yeah, yeah. whiner baby. Oh, yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> Actually, I got to be up at 4, that's pretty good. Yeah, he's he got to he's got to be up at five thirty. Ashley's well, I gotta tell you, people. Uh, hmm? Thank you very much for letting me relate some of this to you, and I, I I did not want it to come across like it was whining and crying and, and that type of thing. Nope. Um, but I really appreciate it um, because I I think it is a good topic. I loved that you had this topic um, because it's not. I mean. There's there's a lot of people that are are being treated the same way within our religion, and if if we're going to be a religion that says that we are very open and we're very tolerant and we have this huge umbrella and there's many paths, you know, to the ultimate truth, um, I would just hope that that we all try to live up to that a little more um, in areas outside of religion as well. But I really really appreciate it. Here, here. I mean, I think you guys, uh, you know, take Values Month seriously, and that's uh, awesome. Kudos to you guys. Yeah. But I, too, have to take off, so I'm going to take off. Good night. Good night. Wait a minute. We have to have Values? Values? <laughs> Nobody told me that. <laughs> I know. told Dave I added the Pagan Values prefix to this episode once I realized this was going to be released during Pagan Values Month, and I needed an episode for it. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, <laughs> shit. I like it. Next thing you know, you'll tell me I have to have morals and ethics for God's sake. I was told There's I have no life. morals. I only They're have values. Hey, if it wasn't for Scurry, we wouldn't even have ethics in the book we're writing. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> the ultimate irony. Hey. <laughs> I have, you know, I've I've made quite a bit of study on morals and ethics. Yeah, you have, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, since we're already in the middle of final thoughts, my final thought is I take great uh, great uh, accomplishment in eliciting <laughs> irony in getting um, declared fair game by a certain author by Wiser Publishing as a result of <laughs> discussing fair game and how we should end it. <laughs> I'm late. I'm late and it's tired. Um... My brain is becoming mush, but I think that her game, some people are always going to be assholes, some people are always going to be buttheads, some people are always going to feel that they have the right to treat other people that way. I think that if people do behave that way, the best thing to do, short of shooting back, is to... Ignore them, or reason with other people who are listening to their ranting as well, so that they become known as morons. I should like to state for the record that I frequently follow him around with a ball bat to take care of the people that that doesn't work for. <laughs> <laughs> it does. She's got one. <laughs> Yet again, I'm going to reintroduce everybody to the concept of please do not discuss felonies on the Pagan Centered Podcast. <laughs> it irritates the... Po okay, we have bored, cranky post-producers. It's not felony, it's sporting <laughs> goods. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm cashing in on the, on the Let's Move America thing, darn it. I'm encouraging people to be physically active. There you go. Teach them to run. Play ball. Yeah, I mean, the, the wife of the freaking president told us to do this. Really? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, cool. that chick Rush Limbaugh said was fat. Yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> and a Stalinist, yeah. Uh. 
sporting goods. I maintain my position. I'm not really into sports and all that stuff, which is also part of the reason why I don't know much about politics. Uh. Okay, so we're going to take you out snipe hunting, like, you know, when we go to powwow, right? (laughs) Crab fishing. We're crab fishing. Okay, everybody get this story (laughs) straight. It's crab (laughs) fishing. (laughs) <laughs> I don't got crabs. Oh, awesome. <laughs> oh no! Uh. You you should have known better than that. Come on, Kara. You see what I got to put up with? Yeah. <laughs> you As a kid, I think everyone should at least once in their lifetimes be in the crosshairs of a trebuchet, just so they know how it feels. That sounds I've like that sh- would be painful. I've had they- a shotgun. Pointed at me. Does that count? Yeah, but you so, get that every week, Scurvy. You're going to become immune to that eventually. I have two ones. You mean there's people that haven't? What, been in the crosshairs of a trebuchet? Oh, no, I know there's people... Ha- Dude, okay, crosshairs <laughs> on a trebuchet. We're going to talk later, all right? <laughs> Aimable. Of course they are. That way. (laughs) That's what that's what the phrase trajectory that's what the phrase trajectory establishing shot is for. Okay, we'll (laughs) practice we'll practice tomorrow. Yours is yours has got a little dust on it. It needs to be it needs to be taken down anyway. Yes. It's a cute little feller and it's house trained (laughs) and everything. Um seize the day. Um Well, darn it! I had some. I had something that was actually fairly good, and the train just completely not only got derailed, it's careening off into a ravine somewhere into a fire. That's a fiery inferno. So screw it. I saw something today that made me think of you, Snooze. I was at the dentist's office, and there was this little (laughs) box on this little tool gizmo gadget device thing on the counter, which, which. um, on the front of it was a legend um, um, Decision Apex Locator and I almost asked hey what does that do? <laughs> it counts Geigers <laughs> that's where I went exactly right it <laughs> locates Precision a- Apex is you retard yep it counts Geigers <laughs> that's my story I'm sticking to it I'm in the hee-hee zone. I need to go to bed, people. Okay. Right. <laughs> I don't like, I don't like, being, in, I don't like hmm? being in jobs where I have to use a Geiger counter. <laughs> they tend to be bad things. Wait, this, there's a backstory to that. Well, I had a, a wonderful, intelligent friend who normally would not ask this question, but he was sleep deprived. He was at the house, and I was I was going through a box of computer parts trying to rig out stuff that we could juice his system up with, and he said, "What's that box?" I said, "It's a power supply." And he said, "What does it do?" <laughs> so of course I said, "It counts Geigers." Yes. And he went in the bathroom and didn't come out for 15 minutes. <laughs> <coughs> so, okay, yeah, I don't need, I don't have cable. I don't need cable. <laughs> we don't need cable. We have goofy friends like you guys. Uh, <laughs> speaking of which, it is nine it minutes is after 11. 11 and you're turning into a pumpkin. I am turning into a pumpkin and Amber, I'm in love with that thing on the top of your head. So there. <laughs> Yeah, I want to meet this guy in person. I love But you. everybody have a fantastic, fantastic rest of the evening. And I'm going to see you at the phone and see you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Enjoy talking to you, Kara. Good night. Bye. It's been very awesome. <laughs> you are awesome. Thank you. Yay. Now, for you idiots that get your paycheck from Wiser, just remember, if you send me a threat of credible credible threat of violence. <laughs> These are the people I surround myself with. <laughs> oh, hey, Joe, last closing thought. You're an asshole, but I love you. Oh, nothing but love. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, finally glad you, I'm finally glad you got your glasses. <laughs> I'm sorry. How now, weird. there's only three final thoughts remaining. Oh, final thoughts. We forgot Peter. Peter wasn't even here. I know, but... In, in, I mean, he was the, the only person in the Bay community not here tonight, okay? 
Did we miss anybody? Yep. Yeah, oh well. I know, but for the whole you surrounding yourself, I mean, but oh well, it's no biggie. You judge a person by their company. Yeah. That's because you can't give final thoughts, shoot. Do we have any uh, <laughs> books from uh, Wiser Books up there on our uh, Shelfari? I don't know. But, oh, we don't use Shelfari anymore. We use uh, Amazon. Go to imbleedingprofusely.com slash books. Woohoo! So you can bleed profusely and read books at the same time, I guess. <laughs> I guess my final thought would be, like, all the crap that I kind of spewed on Facebook wasn't, I was, I had mostly the pagan community in mind because I wanted people to feel comfortable with disagreeing with someone, and I took it way too far because Ashley should not be allowed to have internet access when she is tired because she gets really grumpy, and then things move funny, and she feels the need to eviscerate them. Ashley, I think this is the first time in like 50 episodes you've actually lasted till final thoughts. I know, I'm so <laughs> proud of myself. This is, this is my goal tonight. I don't care what happens, I'm staying up. Alright, it's good. Since everybody's basically told you to go screw yourself, what's your final thought? <laughs> I feel the love. You kidding? No, love around here. <laughs> Nothing but love. Well, we call it love. Yeah, we we love you, Scurvy. And not just because you have an awesome RV that we're using. <laughs> Still has my car charger. I'm sorry. Actually, I've been using that for my uh, headsets. Hey, as long as it's been being used. <laughs> I gotta get that up to you. Amber, I know you haven't had many thoughts this episode. Do you have any final thoughts? Yeah, this episode allowed me to paint two Canadian geese. <laughs> That's all, really. <laughs> so, so Amber's as involved in this episode as I've been in the last two episodes. Yes. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we've managed to average out. <laughs> hey, I was actually involved in this one. Yeah, you were. Good job, Scurvy. I think like the last four or five, I barely said anything. Well, I think that does it for this few episodes of PC. <laughs> We'll see you next week when uh, I don't know what we're doing there. Oh, we got, um, what's her face on? The, uh, auditor hoodoo chick. That's it. I always forget her name, but apparently there's, like, like 300 people RSVP'd for this thing. And we thought we had lots of people on this episode. (laughs) How many can we fit in Skype? Uh, 25, unless we open up to a phone bridge, in which case we can accommodate about a little over a thousand. Sweet God, we can barely handle ten people talking over each other. <laughs> Magic <Imagine the five. laughs> How do we do a phone bridge? Uh, really, really crappily. Use freeconferencing.com and it just sucks. Well, actually, I got a second Skype account. We could work some magic, but I don't know. Yeah, we could work some magic. That's, that's possible. We have the live audio feed, like a cartoon picture of a plane going down in flames with stick figures <laughs> flying out the sides. Man, yeah. if you can make that video, I'll totally use that for the live feed. <laughs> Crap, you gave me a goal. <laughs> hey, pawn it off on Squirt. <laughs> All right, that's it for tonight, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Hi. All right, recording number one of three has stopped. Recording number two of three has stopped. Uh, hang on. Actually, there's four recordings. <laughs> Recording number three.